Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second podcast here from Broken Knock Podcast, Broken Knock Productions. Sorry, it's been a long day. I've been here since 530 in the morning, yeah, worried we about them floodwaters. But, uh, oh, yeah. You made fortunately, it. that didn't happen. But uh, I am one of your hosts here, Chris DePerna. A lot of you know me from Creek Archery here, and I have my lovely daughter, Megan DePerna, next to me. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm wonderful. <laughs> How's everything with you today? Better than it was going for you. Yeah. Well, hey, we made it out. We got we got lucky. So uh, very blessed, and you know. So we're we're here. We made yeah. it. Uh, Mr. Ken Reese also here with yeah. us. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing excited. Good. Yeah, excited. Yeah. 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 We were uh, podcast number two, so yeah. we're excited to be here and excited to uh, get going with these again. You know, we just had the the first one with uh, Rob with Total Archery Challenge and uh, had a nice discussion with him. And I think we're going to do the same thing here tonight with our our guest. Uh, excuse me, guest that we have, uh, Mr. Matt Kreis. How you doing, Matt? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We appreciate you being here, buddy. Um, we wanted to get this one in as our second podcast. We have uh, the Chico Outdoors show coming up this weekend at Westmoreland Fairgrounds. That's something that we're part of. Uh, this is what, Matt, how many years now for that? This is year number six. Year number, number six. six. So. Four years at the fairgrounds, two at Norvell Fire Hall. So, yeah, yeah, and I remember when it started out there, and it's just it's something that's been growing every year. Uh you know, this is uh, this is something that's near and dear to Matt. Uh, this isn't just your your average outdoor show. It's not just a your average vendor event. Um, you know, you do have vendors there. You have a lot going on in in this uh, show and 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 uh, at the event. And we'll go over all that. But what I kind of want to do first for all of our listeners and viewers is just kind of get into the beginning of Chico Outdoors and what Chico Outdoors is, what that means to you, how this started, and, um, you know, who Chico is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, Chico, obviously, was my brother. Um, a lot of people probably kind of know that at this point in the game, but um, it's been a long time since we really went this far back with it. Um, we do have a big sign at the show that kind of outlines everything. Some people want to read that, too. But um, and he was his full name is Andrew John Christ. Chico came as a nickname. Um, kind of funny behind that. It's it came from all our brothers at the fire department. He looked Mexican. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. That's that, that's, that's where it came from. He, he was very dark complexion, very dark hair. Um, it just it kind of stuck. He 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 right. got Chico, and that just stuck. So, um, going back to to the beginning, that's one nickname he had. My parents had a nickname for him was Rue. Um, from Andrew, that was back when when Winnie the Pooh was big and <laughs> right, he, yeah. he, he was her little Rue. Um, so that was that that so kind of nickname stuck. That that one stuck with him for through the family. But then as we got older, the Chico kicked in when he right. joined the fire department. That was yeah. anybody knows fire departments. Nobody goes by their real name. <laughs> Everybody's right, gonna have right. a nickname. Mm-hmm. So um, that kind of stuck with him. So that's so where you, that's where the Chico came from. Right. So you yeah. both were what volunteer firemen then for yeah. what Norvelt Fire Department? Yeah, we we both actually started at Trogger um, together. I joined first. He was younger. He came in behind me at Trogger. He then moved over to Norvelt, which um, our whole family on my dad's side everybody went through norvell fire hall my uncles were all firemen my dad my grandfather my great-grandfather was actually a founding member of the fire department he was the last surviving member when he passed away of oh, the wow. original wow. founding members of it um so it's a we, lot of generations there it is it is and we kind of we kind of went our own way a little bit going to a different department but we were drawn back to norvell obviously right um he we put in years there. Um, he moved on. He ended up moving. He worked for uh, Rolling Rock Farms up in Lachlan Town. He was he did maintenance up there, and so he ended up moving out of the area. He moved to to Wilpen for a while. He joined up with the fire department in Wilpen, and then he moved up to Lachlan Town. Guys that he worked with up there had a trailer. He moved in closer to work, and that's that's he started living up there then. Um, that's ultimately where he passed away was was at work at rolling rock farms oh, wow. um he just fell over uh, he had a heart condition they never knew he had and he just fell over dead wow. um he was on the phone with my dad 15 minutes before that on his lunch break 
and they were talking about our camp in Potter County, and he had a short week that week. He was planning on meeting Dad. Dad was already up in Potter, and I was actually at a baseball tournament in uh, Fair Chance with my son. He was in the All-Star Tournament for baseball, and <clears throat> we got a call. Um, they found him in a stairwell unresponsive. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry to hear that. Yeah, I mean, it literally could come as more of a shock. Like, no, nobody had any, any yeah. clue. So you had no him. past history of anything or just, no, just, no, just he, something? No, he really didn't. He he was in the hospital. That's We were trying to figure out the whole timeline, how everything went. But um, he had been in the hospital two weeks prior, I think, um, just general not feeling good. And, and they attributed it to just dehydration. He was out right. cutting firewood that, that weekend. Uh, he passed away in July, so it was it was hot. He was yeah. cutting right. firewood. He did like to drink some beer, and they figure that... As we all do. Yeah. They, right. they figure that he just wasn't drinking water. He was drinking beer while he's cutting firewood. They said, ah, you know, you're dehydrated, whatever. Right. Never looked at his heart, nothing like that. There was no sign, anything saying to look at the heart. And at that age, they usually don't. That's what I was going to ask you. How old was he? He was 28 years old. Oh, my gosh. Wow. 28. Oh, man. Um, and you hear kids falling over on a basketball court or football field. Right. It's the same thing. Um, basically, what it boiled down to is he had an enlarged heart. Um, the heart just keeps getting bigger and bigger until it, mm -hmm. and it, it pumps slower and slower, and then all of a sudden it just stops. And yeah. you don't. They said he may have noticed a little bit of shortness of breath, but he was active. Like yeah, he, it, right. we, I mean, that, we'll get into it here about you know where how we started in the hunt and fishing and stuff. But mm -hmm. like he he lived in the woods, it, it, woods and the streams. He was always gone between here or camp in Potter County. He never stopped. So if he wasn't in the the fire department uniform, he was he was probably in some camo somewhere. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. we um we started hunting and fishing real young. Like it, it, my whole family, both sides of my family, my mom's side, my dad's side, everybody. We they were all in the hunting and fishing. Um, we hunted a lot. We grew up in Kecksburg. Um, we we lived the first part of our life in United, not too far from the fairgrounds, and then my parents built a house in Kecksburg. And we were on 10 acres of property that went off into a very large piece of public land, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so we, from the time we were young, like, mom didn't even check on us. Like, we, we were out in the woods. <laughs> yeah, right. understand yeah. myself. Yeah. We didn't come home by dark, then dad kept looking. Yeah. Right. Um, but mm -hmm. we were out, I mean, we were probably not supposed to be, but we were we were carrying guns by ourselves, you know, at 10, 11 years old, <laughs> 22s, and we're out shooting birds and shooting stuff we weren't supposed to. Um I gotta watch how I say that now. <laughs> With my other side of my face. <laughs> yeah, we um, get into that. Yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. That later. But um, no, nah, but we just—I mean, we were always in the woods. We had the camp in Potter County. We didn't go up there a lot when we were young, um, but my parents ended up separating, and, and Dad started going back up to camp more, and Andy started going up with him, and then I started going up too because hit my brother and sister and went to live with my dad for a while, and then my dad was always at camp too, and so. They became a fixture in Potter County. Right. My dad's considered a local, even though he don't live there. He's there more than he is here. And my brother kind of fell into that, too, up there and got into helping with the, the sportsman's club up there. He's Fork Sportsman's. He got in with their kids' derby and helping with that. Down here, he was always helping one of his friend's kids, um, you know, friends of his that maybe didn't have a parent that was involved in hunting or fishing. He would get them in to go with him, things like that. It was just kind of his thing like we grew up in it we we were around it my uncles hunted my grandfather hunted when we were in kecksburg was nice because that piece of property that we hunted there we had our property my uncles was next door on the same driveway and my other uncles would come up my grandfather would come up first day of deer season we were all there you yeah. know cousins uncles it's a big family if, affair yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. And so we, I mean, we, it was second nature to us, but he started taking kids under his wing and trying to get kids out. And there's, there's a lot of pictures floating around that we found after the fact of different friends of his, as he got older and was doing his own thing, he'd be taking friends, kids out and, you know, girlfriends, friends, kids and whatever. Just yeah. introducing them to the outdoors yeah, and hunting and fishing. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's and great. He, and it, we kind of laughed because when he got in working up at Rolling Rock, um, they've got a really good trout hatchery up there and obviously that's mm -hmm. an exclusive club up there and he wasn't a lot of fish up there and and i think he liked fishing more than he did hunting to be honest like i think that was more his thing like if he could be in a stream over hunting he would but i mean he loved both right but i think if he had to pick he'd be fishing 
and I think that killed him because he he got to know the guy running the hatchery and this and that and the the fly fishing area up there. He could hunt three days a year up there, but he was not allowed to fish up there. Oh, and I man. think and I think that just ate at him. <laughs> yeah. So, but he learned over the years that where the property ends, where those fish go when the water gets high. He's right. got, he caught his share of nice fish. He's he's he ha, he has a citation brown. I have his citation. He got a brown. It was a twenty six inch brown. Oh wow, five that's a nice one. And so we kind of laugh about that fish because that fish went from I'm getting it mounted. I'm getting it mounted. Ah, I don't quite got the money to get it mounted. It ended up in my sister's freezer. My older sister it ended up in her freezer. It moved two houses with her. When she went to move to Georgia, she said, I'm not taking the fish. With <laughs> she said, you got to do something with it. And he's like, well, at this point, I it's probably no good anymore. <laughs> and it, it got pitched, but we still have the citation and everything. Yeah. Um, so he he kind of figured out where, where he could catch them big fish. Nice, and, nice. And he would take kids down to that, that spot and let kids catch fish there. And um, Even even just, just out at Mammoth Dam, if he saw a kid that did had a broken rod he'd give him his best rod just to keep fishing while he fixed theirs right um, he did that up at east fork sportsman's when when he would stalk for the fishing derby he'd get up in the morning he'd put his waders on at seven in the morning he'd head out meet the stocking truck because they have a co-op hatchery up there since the sportsman's club stocks all the fish he'd go up meet them they'd go down they'd take a load down they'd come back up he'd make them pull in the driveway He'd fill his waders back up with beer for all the guys. His <laughs> pouch in the front of his waders. He'd be handing beers out to the guys. <laughs> I mean, these guys are like, dude, it's 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 eight in the morning. He's like, can't drink can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning. That's you know, right. he's passing That's beers right. up, and, and they would go up and get another. So he load. had fun with. Oh, it. he oh, did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. And they'd go up That's... and get the fish, take them back down, and when they got their last load done, he would patrol the creek just to make sure the kids were fishing. The parents weren't that kind of thing. He'd be in his waders all day long, never never stop. And, and the same thing up there, he'd. If a kid was having trouble or got snagged, he'd got in the middle of the creek and, and I'd hook it for him so they didn't lose their hook, you know, and stuff like that. So we kind of, after his passing, we kind of, we wanted to keep keep that alive somehow. We we weren't sure how we wanted to do it. Um, we kicked around a bunch of different ideas, and, and actually one of the funny things, we were sitting around our camp in Potter County, and we had made mention that we should start the Chico Triathlon. You had to see how fast you see who could drink a beer the fastest <laughs> run down to the, the hole behind camp that, that they usually took care of us you know stock that catch a fish the fastest and then whatever else the third one was we never came up with but, you know, we, and so we we kind of joked about that and then some time passed and and we got everything squared away and and i actually happened to be sitting at work one day and the lady i worked with she said she said well i said I can't come up with an idea. Like I want to do something to keep his memory alive, and I want to raise some money for the organizations that he that he worked with. And she's like, "Well, why don't you do an outdoor show or like a vendor show or something?" And I'm like, "How the hell am I gonna do that? Like, where?" And she's like, "Well, your fire hall got a got a hall." And I'm like, "Yeah, I mean, I, I guess." I was like, "Like, what what are you thinking?" And she's like, "Well, she's like, I've seen some of these big shows. You know, they just get some vendors and." you know, some entertainment or something or raffles or, you know, just do something. And so we kicked it around and I'm like, yeah. So we ended up deciding that we were, we were going to try it. So mm-hmm. started out that first year at Norville Fire Hall and we had 20 vendors and the place was packed. We had, we had food donations from different businesses. We did a Chinese auction, a couple other raffles, just a one day event, a Sunday after or Sunday from like we started at eight in the morning till five or something like that. And, we had 500 people through the door with, with, with 20 wow. vendors. And we're like, man, this, wow. maybe maybe the area needs something like this. Right. You know, and, and we had reached out to, at the time, Keystone Experience, or uh, Keystone Wild Outdoors. And Steve was on board. And he couldn't be there that year. Matt and Rob came. And we, we still laugh. Every time we do their podcast, they're like, that first year, everybody, when you got into your spot, you didn't get out. Because there was just that many people. Like, yeah. people were just filtering in and... And the way the building was laid out, you you couldn't go. Yeah, that's a that's you know, a lot of people it, in it was, a yeah, fire hall. Like it that. is, yeah. and that's we, I laugh because it's it's a fire hall, and I know we were over fire. That's what I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna say. I'm yeah. sure you were over code. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, if the fire marshal would have stopped, yeah, in trouble. Luckily, my plus touch is pretty easy on that. But <laughs> um, but it went really well. We decided that eh, yeah, maybe we got something here. Right. What year, what year was that that you had the the first one? That would have been 2018. It was the following year after he passed. It was we did that one in 
I guess we would have done that one in March. I think we would have. I think we did that one the end of March that year. Okay. Because the first two years. So he passed in 2017. He passed in 2017. Okay. We did it the following March of 2018 is when we started the first one, I believe. And the second year we put a tent outside. We had like 30 vendors, and it snowed. It was it was just bad. The tent. That was that. That was the year that you were. That we, was, yeah, that that's when we year first year we got involved. Yeah, because I remember the tent. Yeah, yeah, that was the first year you were involved. Um, I believe that's first. That we had a trout pond there. That was the first time we did a trout pond. We come up with that yep. idea. Tried that. Um, Again, it went really well. We had a thousand people, so we're like, okay, now now we're out of room. Not to mention, my fire hall does a fish fry for Lent, so we're going to be running into that. It was like we got to we got to come up with something something here. Only place we could go that was bigger was the fairgrounds. It wasn't ideal because of the way it's laid out with the individual buildings and mm -hmm. things, but we thought, well, we're gonna we're gonna try to make it work because right we want to keep this going. It's it's picking up steam. We want we want to keep going with it. We approached the fair board. There was nothing like it in the area. They were like, okay, yeah, cool. Like, we'll give it a shot. So they gave me a price on it. First year, I thought the price was a little bit high because we had no budget. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Our, yeah. our budget yeah. has grown some. We're still not we're still not setting the world on fire, but we're, we're able to do exactly what we want to do. We're able to, to fund the programs we want to fund. Every year we bring more in as we get bigger and we have more funds to distribute. We, we're bringing more into the fold. So that's the the one thing about this. As you've grown, uh, the the money that comes in from your your event, mm -hmm. uh, it it pretty much all goes back out. You guys are unpaid. This goes back out to different youth organizations throughout the mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know southwestern Pennsylvania. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's one thing I can't say enough about our board of directors and our volunteers that help us. I mean, none of us are paid staff at all. Um, the money we we raise a small portion stays back for the following show. Everything else goes out. Right. Um, we right now we're currently sponsoring military veterans outdoors, all the local trap teams and, and rifle teams, um, children's hospital. We've donated to numerous times now, um, all the local fishing derbies, all the sportsman's clubs. We do heckle sportsman's youth pheasant hunt. Um, we've gotten really into, into, those youth hunts and, and fishing derbies and stuff, we're giving guns out. Um, you know, we're making donations and, ca you know, cash donations to these clubs. We're giving prizes out. Um, it just, it, just all stuff that your brother would be into. Like yeah. he would, if he was here, it would be like, man, this Ab is absolutely. Awesome. And that's yeah, so we, we're doing this for all these kids. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we look at it and it's like, I've always said from, from the beginning, like the first couple of years, you know, really getting us going and talking about it and stuff it, it was hard i'm it, it was it was still fresh you know we were just trying to figure things out and now looking back it's like it, it's kind of bittersweet because yes we took something really bad but we really turned it into something good i mean right. we, we've been able to do Absolutely. so much with it just in, even just in our community and we're starting to branch out now as we get bigger we we want to branch out we're reaching out to organizations further outside the area um Potter County is about the furthest we go right now, um, but not saying we we're, we're not willing to go anywhere at this point. I mean, we've right. got the different organizations that we want to partner with. Um, that's going to be our next goal is to find a couple other organizations to partner with that outside the area to get us into new areas and get them into this area and you know kind of help each other out. That's right. Yeah, the more that you can expand on that, the more that you can get people there. Yeah. The more yeah. organizations outside of you know you know this core area of Westmoreland County and into Fayette and Allegheny and and even further, like you said, I mean that's that's going to benefit you guys in growing the program and benefit the organizations that you're helping. Oh, abso absolutely. And as I said, anybody that, as far as the shooting teams go and stuff like that, that really blew my mind. That's something we really jumped into over the last, like, two years, I guess. Um, it's, it's blowing up in the area. I don't know why. I, I'm, I'm glad to see it, that the high schools are finally taking on. I, from what I understand, the schools aren't, aren't taking a lot of it on. They're letting them use the name. So if somebody approaches you from one of these shooting teams and you can help, definitely help because their boosters are building these organizations and mm -hmm. it we all know it's not cheap to shoot i mean mm -hmm. these kids need the ammo they need mm -hmm. the, the target the clay pigeons guns you know what i mean right. if you can help out a kid to, to get a gun and get into this um 
I really feel that, and, and this was something that I really was excited to get involved in with the kids because I feel, and I've had a gun in my hand since I was, since I could hold a gun, you know, but I was taught the right way. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the biggest problem nowadays is they're not, they're not letting these kids learn about a gun. They're learning about guns through video games and things like that. And yeah, you can't, you, you, can't, you, can't, not, you yeah. can't hit reset. No. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you teach the kids the right way and these kids now that are learning to shoot, they're learning the right way. They're learning the safety aspects of it. These kids aren't going to go out and commit a crime with that gun. Mm-hmm. These kids right. are going to get into hunting, hunting, mm-hmm. trapping, fishing. They're going to get into the outdoors because this is just, a, that's a stepping stone. Yeah. yeah. You know, people put down guns all the time and, and, and I get so tired of hearing it. They don't want shooting teams in schools. They don't want this and that. But that's where you got to get it into the kids. When Absolutely. Young, Absolutely. You do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see, you know, with having the archery shop here, a lot of those kids that you're, you're talking about on these trap teams and whatnot, I, you know, a lot of the closer ones, I, I see them come in here. I, I can remember those kids coming in here, you know, six, seven, eight, nine years old, and now they're teenagers. Absolutely. And, yeah. and it's yeah. awesome to see that those kids have developed those outdoor type of skills as well as the 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 want and the want to be out there and want to do that and right. and the programs that uh that are out there for them being funded by you know programs like yours is fantastic to get these kids to where they're not just sitting there with a cell phone in their hand all the time they're exactly. they're, they're learning something right. and you know and and like we talked on our first podcast with rob there's things in the outdoors that you will see out there that you're not going to see no you oh, know, absolutely. And, and a lot of whether it be sitting in your living room or in the middle of the city, uh, no, you know, no, so that's a, it's, it's I'm, definitely a good thing. I'm very fortunate. My son, he's he's a little bit of both. You know, I mean, up until recently, he had no interest in video games at all. And a lot of his buddies are playing, you know, now that everything is is over the Internet, and you can you can play with all your buddies. And stuff. He's getting into it a little bit. And that's OK. You know, but, I, but I will say this. The video game system he has, he bought it. Like mm-hmm. he works, he's yeah. 17 years old. He's going to Votech for welding. He loves hunting and fishing. He's just, I will say he's, he's an all around good right. kid. Um, I don't think I'll ever have a problem with him. You know what I mean? That way. But I don't have a problem with him playing video games at night with his buddies because I know as soon as I call, if I go and wake him up at seven in the morning, and say, Hey, we're going hunting. He's up. He's going. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't have a problem with it. And, and he, I didn't buy him the game. I told him, you want it? You're going to buy it. And right. he did so and he's bought his own welder he's bought stuff so oh, great I'm trying to you know keep instill that in him and yeah. i think that it seems to me like the kids that are that are more involved in the outdoors and involved in these shooting teams and stuff they're more respectful they're i was just gonna say that it's just it's the discipline it, it is. is yeah it absolutely is. my dad yeah. instilled it to me when i ever since i was little and then it turned into i had i held a nra uh instructor card okay. for a firearm instructor card for a mm-hmm. while and him and i helped out down at uh white oak rod and gun club okay. that we've been yep. members at and it's just it's like a good feeling you know you, you're you're there with the kids you have a big youth day that they hold every year and you know you're running them in a circle you know in a circle kind of all around the club you cover all the outdoor all the outdoor activities there's an archery area yep. uh, you went to the rifle range the pistol range they had a guy that brought a muzzle loader out i mean it's it's great. Yeah, and that's ultimately, I mean, I've I've had that idea in my head, like, like my big goal, and I say this, if I if I ever hit the Powerball, you know, for this billion-dollar Powerball or whatever, <laughs> I want to open a camp. I want to open a kid's camp. And we always laugh. I mean, it's, it's going to be Camp Chico, you mm-hmm. know, and I, I always said, like, there was just a, the, girl, the old Girl Scout camp up in New Florence just sold a couple years ago, and Jack Brown's been with us. He's not yeah. going to be able to be with us this year, but Jack sold the property up there, and I... I sent Jack a message jokingly saying, do you know anybody that might want to donate that property? That's a great tax write-off. <laughs> he's like, yeah. yeah, he's like, I wish I could get somebody to do that for you. But, um, I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, we're going to get into this year, this coming year. I know Todd Rupert's going to get, get in with the, the Turkey Federation local chapter here, number uh-huh. one, and their Jake's Day event, which is right across the road from the fairgrounds, basically, at Greensburg Sportsman's Club. And we want to get involved with that this year because – Right now, we're just not quite at that point where we can do our own our own thing like that. But that one's been one that's been around. I did that one when I was a kid. You know, I'm right. 42 years old, and I did that one at, at nine, ten years old. So that's been around for a while. Yeah. So I, I that one's one that that been it's been maintaining, and I'm 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 really curious to see where it goes because everything Todd Rupert gets behind ends up 
Turn, turning pretty well. <laughs> yeah, he's a solid and, guy. He, he is. He and is. So he wants us to get involved in that, and I'm really, really excited for that one too to to get involved with that this year. That's good. Yeah, right. yeah. That's that's awesome. You know, to to see that. Uh, you know where where you started with this. You know, I, I you know I can remember back being there at the Norvelt Fire Hall and. <laughs> And I remember talking to you a few times about saying, "Man, you, this this is just going to grow. This is going to get this is going to get big." And and uh, I also remember telling you, Matt, you need help, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> yeah, you we, were running yeah. around oh, like yeah. a nut, you yeah, know, we, trying to get things done. We, so we've had quite a few of them uh, come to Jesus talks, you and I, because <laughs> um, every time I come in here, we end up on the subject and and there's always something. And even tonight, we were talking. There's some stuff stressing yep. me out and. You always brought me back down, you yeah, know what I mean? And I, I've always respected, you know, your opinion on this stuff and you're in the industry. And, and that's why um, just this past year, we, we actually expanded our board of directors and we, and we, we brought yeah, on I was, some, some... I was going to ask you, when did you realize you needed a board? Was it after that second yeah, event? I mean, yeah. I mean, we didn't really act on it until probably two years ago. Um, I think now that we really got the board going, maybe three years Um yeah, we just we were at that point. I mean, we just we decided the first two years we kind of slid under the radar. I think it was the, th- the, well, the third year we lost. We lost because of COVID. Right. Um, we were we were scheduled. Yeah, everybody. Everything did. was a go. Like that hurt because yeah. I was that was going to be our first big event at the fairgrounds. Oh uh, yeah. And everything was ready to go, and that that all hit. And I even called, you know, I called di- around different guys. I talked to Urban Shipley. I said, "Hey, what's what's the stance on you know from the sheriff's department? What's the stance? Because everybody was saying, you know, all the horror stories. They're they're going to shut you down. You try to have an event, you're getting shut down. Right. I was I was hell bent on doing it. It I wasn't shutting down. That was my attitude. I said, the people that aren't scared are going to come. If you are, I don't fault you. Don't don't come. You know, but we're still going to have our show. Then the vendors started dropping out." And it was like once we hit a certain point, I was like, "This, this isn't going to be worth doing this." Yeah. Right. So we called the fair fairgrounds and we said, "Hey, you know, we're going to have to cancel." And they're like, "That's up to you." You know, we're not. And, and that was one nice thing, Westmoreland Fair Board. They were leaving it up to us too. Okay. They weren't shutting the grounds and telling us we couldn't come up. It just it got to the point where we had to we just had to had to shut it down, yeah. and that really sucked. But then that kind of opened our eyes too that. Yeah, we gotta we gotta do things the right way now. So right. we we ended up we registered as a five hundred one c three, and we are we're we're full five hundred one c three nonprofit. Um, so that was big. Then with that, we had to get the board together, and we put a temporary board together to get it going. And then we've kind of settled in now to where we're at. Um, and it's it started out basically family and friends, um, and I, and I laugh all the time because people that started as acquaintances quickly became friends. And now we consider Absolutely. them all family. Yeah. Right. It's that, just, Matt, uh, I said that same absolutely. thing about this shop. Yeah. That's the best thing. I mean, yeah. you know, you sitting there, Ken sitting there. It, without this shop, that doesn't happen. Right. You know, right. it's it's Absolutely. those friendships and that that are developed, you know, through this that's important. Yeah, no, and you, and, and you were instrumental in it. I mean, that's it, this has really come full circle now. This, this is really cool because that's what I said. We did our first podcast up here. Mm-hmm. I've been you've been with me since since day day two or you know show two yeah and we've got a good relationship a working relationship you help us out with all the bows we need for our tickets and everything but but more than that you become our friend that we can we can confide in and and that's what's made it I mean if I look at the networking side of it that's been the biggest thing is is just and it's not even like it, it starts out as as business acquaintances like we said the same right. same way. And then before you know it, we're everybody, everybody's friends, and it's absolutely, and that's that's, that's what's helped us to grow. I don't think we could have did it any other way. No. Um, and then once we, I think we did two years as just just the board, and then we decided that we had a four person board. So obviously, <laughs> when it comes to decisions and a lot of stuff went split, so <laughs> we we decided to add some trustees and. There were so many people. That's why I said. With that being said, there were so many people on our list that we were like, "Well, what about this? And what about this?" And and we just kind of narrowed it down. Todd Rupert was probably the first one. Todd Todd's been with me absolutely day one. Mm-hmm. He was probably the first vendor I think that set up for me. Um, we called him, and if you know Todd, it 
I think he was crying on the phone when I called him and it's no shame. And he'll say it the same way. Cause he, he's told me it before he was very honored. Yeah. He saw what we had going. He saw what direction we were headed and he just, he was on board a hundred percent. Yeah. He's a genuine guy. Like he will do anything. For he him. is. He is. And then we called Mark Franks. Mark was with me. Mark had anchored angler in the past. Mark was kind of stepping back a little bit from his stuff, and he's just been a driving force. He he's the one that did our website. Um, Mike Fay up at up at uh, Forbes Trail Brewing does that on the side. Him and Mark are good friends. They built our website. Um, Mark's just been all over everything this year. Like he's gotten us vendors. He's gotten us uh, giveaways. Right. I mean, you name it. Like every yeah, day. all stuff you need for the, oh, this it, event it, it, and stuff that I don't I don't necessarily think about. Right. And that, like the website, I knew we needed it, but that's, I had no idea how to to create a mind for you guys. And yeah. And the stuff that they're coming up with, it's just been unreal. And then CJ Shrum was with us from, Mm -hmm. from the beginning, him and him and Austin, my nephew were friends and that just grew. He offered his services. That was another thing. Like in the beginning, I said, we're on a very tight budget. You want to do it as professional as you can, but you're on a shoestring budget. Those are the people that, that, that rise to the top. And, And he's like, he's like a, I got DJ equipment. What do you need? Like, right. I'll announce for you. I'll play some music, yeah. whatever. Uh-huh. And so he's been with us. So we've we've entertained the idea of adding more to the board. That's probably going to come over time. As but you grow. As yeah, we grow. Whatever, as as um, needed. You know, as we see. And we're, we're getting into starting to branch off committees and things like that now because it's just and, – and I'm still I'm still guilty of it. I – I try to do too much on my own. <laughs> and, well, and, and I, I, know, I know one it's of the fair events. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm there talking to you, and you got everybody. Matt, what's it? Matt, what do you want to do here? My, you know, and it's like, yeah, you, hey, buddy, you need some help. You <laughs> got to let these guys create their committees and, and control it and roll with and it. It's, you know, and trust that they're going to do what you want. Right, them to do. And, and we're definitely getting there. Like my aunt and uncle, they've taken over the kids' area, the trout pond in the kids' area. They're doing a phenomenal job. They call me and tell me, how, here's a check I need. And I need it sent to this address, and that's it. I'm done. Mm-hmm. Um, the the raffle side of it, um, Keegan's mother, she's taken that over this year. We're we're starting to transition that all to her. That's going to be her baby. Um, the big goal this year is is for me and Austin to be able to get out and mingle. Um, he started the mega ticket, so that's kind of his baby mm-hmm. now. Um, so he's got to kind of deal with that. Which that's a pretty big deal. I, I mean, people love that ticket. ticket. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that 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 <laughs> yeah. ticket like that was something he he came up with that on his own. That was that was all Austin. Um, he came to me and said, "Hey, you know, I I, I want to do something like this," and I said, "Go for it." Mm-hmm. Like, right? Let me know what you need. And that ticket is now up to giving away forty. Forty-two thousand dollars worth of prizes. Yeah, you don't see, as soon as it came you in, don't I was see like, oh, big tickets. Yeah, like, yeah. You, yeah, you're used to the you know guys at work <laughs> bringing in the little the gun tickets with like five guns on it. Uh huh. You see that ticket? It's it's a full seven by eleven sheet. Yeah, of and, paper. And, and I mean, we did raise the price this year. We were we've been forty. He, this is the third year I think that he did it. We've been at forty bucks. We raised it to fifty this year, but in the grand scheme of things, the, the prizes that are on there and, and the amounts of money that we're giving away. An average gun bash ticket now is thirty bucks. Right. Yeah. Um, so I don't, you know, it's you, it, worth every plus it's getting into the show both days. You <laughs> right. get you get all everything that the show has to offer, right. plus that. So, yeah, um, yeah that's right. So, so then while we're on the topic of this ticket, we might as well, like you said, just discuss what it is. I mean, with you know, for the you know the Chico Outdoor Show, you've right. got this mega ticket. Right. How many numbers are on there? There's ten numbers. So you get what is it? Are there three digit? Uh, four digit. Ten yeah, four yeah. digit numbers for fifty bucks. For fifty bucks. To win forty thousand dollars worth of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Our top prize each day is eight thousand cash if you're there, six thousand if you're not. As soon as I saw that on the bottom, I was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm buying you're sold. So, <laughs> you're so sold. and and we got so much more to talk about, but there's yeah, also yeah. that you know, there's there's entertainment involved, there's you know, there's that so that's that ticket's your admission just like if you were going to a gun bash. Absolutely. Right? But you have all that stuff on yeah, there that you Yeah, can... and that's what I mean, our our show I've been promoting it everywhere I go. It's just it's an event. It's not. I don't even. I mean, yes, it's it's an outdoor expo. We're always going to have the vendors, yeah, the vent, the vendor show, and all that. But it's it's a family event. Um, you know, everything we do, like we said, it started out. We aimed it at kids. You know, we branched out with military veterans. We started doing more with the veterans. But the the outdoor show, the event, it's it's a family thing. Like we want that to be. We want people to come spend all day there. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, we're we're keeping the price reasonable. It's it's general admissions five bucks to get in. 
where, where can you go for five bucks? Not right. right. And, nowhere. And, and, nowhere. And plus, kids kids twelve and under are free. We yeah. don't even charge for the kids because that's what we want the kids in there. Yeah. Right. Um, we've got a huge kids area. That is an additional fee, but it's a flat twelve dollars, and you get to do the trout pond. You get to do. I think there's nine different games. Mm-hmm. I mean, my grandkids I love say, that. Oh, yeah. they absolutely the love that. And everything. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You know, that's so. I mean, it's it's yeah. The kids can go play there. Mom and dad can go over and get a beer, or something to eat. Hmm. We got bands playing all week. We got five or all weekend. We got five different bands this year. Um, that's something that that was new. Like, I mean, so the bands start when Saturday morning. Yeah, Saturday morning the first band starts. Uh, Lion Hearts they play eleven thirty to two thirty, and then three thirty to six is Junior Guthrie and the Push, and then the Andy Davis Barn Party is is at seven thirty. And you'll start at seven thirty. We're gonna pull our last number for the our eight thousand cash. We'll pull that for at seven thirty, and then Andy's gonna start playing. He'll play till about nine thirty ish. That time in between, AJ Shawley is going to be floating around. He'll probably do some acoustic stuff while the other bands are setting up. Um, and then Sunday, we have String Theory. Which and, I'm ex- we're friends yeah, the, with that. We're, so they're, we're good with, they're good friends with ours. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, girls that I work with, they they. As soon phenomenal. as I saw it, like yeah. the first time you posted it, I was like tagged him. We were like, like, "Look, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's going to be cool. I think they'll, I think they'll do good. And then Back Roads Band, we had them there last year. They they did really well. They're they got a female lead singer, and she was out in the midway with a wireless mic singing while the band was still playing inside. And oh, she that's was dancing cool. Out Interactive. Yeah. yeah, she was like the crowd really liked them. So, and it, it's it's a lot of different different type of music, and you know everything's a little bit different. So there there should be something there for everybody. Come up, get something to eat, get so get a beer and sit down and listen to music and maybe win some prizes. If absolutely. there's still a few tickets left, um, by the time this this podcast goes out, there may not be. Right. Um, don't hesitate to reach out because we do have some out that that always seem to come back a couple here and there. Right. Um, so there might be something available. If we do have any left, we'll have them at the gate too up there that morning. But the drawings on Saturday start at two o'clock, I think, and go the rest of the day, so you do have time to. To, to get them if we have any left i mean we're getting very very low i had as of today i think i've got 25 left and i don't know what austin has but that's going to be it then out oh, of a thousand so yeah well, well i know i good. have a guy at work begging me to get him one because i'm out of what i had okay so if you have one i, I do need one yeah for yeah, sure yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, make sure make, make sure. sure make sure we stop my truck because they probably won't be there long so yeah no but i will get so you, i will get you so one. the event is two days mm-hmm. um by the time this podcast goes out this is going to actually be posted out there for everyone to listen to or watch probably a few days before right. this event yeah. starts. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's exactly what we wanted timing wise so that we can promote that and, and, and push for it for you. So we're looking at Saturday and Sunday mm-hmm. and the gates there open on Saturday for the public to come in at what time? At 10 a.m. 10 a.m. The yeah, gates 10, open 10 a.m. and the gates close Saturday night. Um, set, uh, we're still kind of, yeah, we're still kind of up in the air about what time. I mean, we're obviously we're going to still charge admission for the band after right. seven o'clock. Right. Because that's technically like a separate concert. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, if you come early, you can stay, but you can also purchase just for the show. So, so in other words, if you didn't have a ticket to get in early, and you just wanted to come for the concert that night. It'll, you could. It'll be five five dollars. Five bucks. Yeah, we'll still charge like five dollars. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, where yeah, you again? Yeah, yeah, you can't yeah, even go into. Again, a, it's five dollars more than that to get into a bar to watch yeah. a band. Right. Yeah. yeah, and I and I think some of our food vendors plan on staying open. You know, with the crowd, they're gonna they're gonna kind of play it by the crowd how long they stay open. But they'll the uh, Norvell Pizza. He's he's always there. He'll 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 stay open. He'll have pizzas. I think Almers is probably gonna stay open. I I can't speak for too many other ones, mm-hmm. but. Um, that's totally up to the vendors. They want to stay open. They're more than more than welcome to. Um, but I mean, yeah, so it, so Saturday then ten a.m. You're opening the gates. Yeah, people can stay there all day. They don't have to leave because everything that they that, could want to do is right there for them. And the yeah. food. I mean, it's, they got yeah, food. Food. Everything. Where's, and who's, then what's the breakfast place that we got? Oh, we were yeah. getting the sandwiches from. Um, last year they were so good. yeah they well he's walking he, through he, like 10 sandwiches and people are like where'd you get <laughs> yeah i mean i know you got what a lot of good vendors this year yeah. so yeah yeah, yeah. Then sunday is what's the hours on sunday sunday's nine to five sunday is 9 a.m to five yeah. and gates close at five the whole yeah. show's over at yeah, five yeah show's over at five and usually um yeah i would say get there get there by three three thirty at the latest because yeah, a lot of our vendors are coming a distance, and and they they want to they want to start tearing down too. But 
yeah, we kind we encourage them to stay open until five, right? Um, to try to get everybody in, but to make sure you get to see everything, you know, try to get there a little early. We mm-hmm. are in the about seven buildings now up there um, with with wow. everything we have going on. Yeah. So yeah, so this is an indoor slash outdoor event. You've got correct, you know, you know the vendors correct. Inside, yeah, if, it, vendors yeah if anybody knows the way the, I mean, most fairgrounds are kind of laid out that same way. They're all different ag buildings and they're not connected, but they're all kind of in the same area. So yeah. um, you do got to kind of, kind of move around the grounds and make sure you check all the buildings. Cause I mean, we're going to try to have everything pretty right. well marked. I mean, that's something we've gotten better at over the years is making sure the buildings are marked and people know what's in them. And mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, so I, everything flows real nice with that. I noticed like, you know, the way you have it set up with your vendors, you kind of flow into one building and you know we're in there with our archery and you got todd there with the turkey calls and you got matt and rob there with their their podcasting and that that they're doing uh you know there's so many people there dave with sense and i mean the list goes on and on then you kind of flow out into uh you have so you have a building that's just all the kids stuff where the pond and that is Correct. you've got yeah. another building that's kind of like you know for anybody out there that says i don't want to go because it's an outdoor show if they're into crafts there's yep. there's a building that's just mm-hmm. crafts yep you've got Pickles. You, yeah, yeah the pickle, pickle guy man oh, yeah. i can't oh, wait oh yeah that's the first thing she looks for <laughs> the anywhere we go. It's gonna be a pickle. They, you, yeah. you got vendors lined up down through <laughs> there uh, they are. so so how many do you know how many vendors you're up to at this point right around 90 around 90. yeah around that's 90 wow. plus, plus our food vendors so we're gonna be we'll be a touch over 100 vendors total um counting our food and craft and all that we'll, we'll be around mm-hmm. probably a couple, a couple over 100 i we had our cutoff um, I believe our cutoff was about the 13th of last month was supposed to be the cutoff, but as I'm laying the buildings out and I find more room, I'll, I'll keep taking people. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you hear this and, and you're just hearing about it, give us a call. I mean, we'll, yeah, for any, can't guarantee we're going to fit you in, but as of, you know, by the time this podcast comes out, I'll have all my layouts done and I'll know what I have for room. And if we can fit you in, we will. If you don't mind being outside, we got lots of room outside. If you want to yeah. bring that, so I mean, we'll fit you anywhere. We, we are can. you still doing the flea market section, or um, is that we are? Um, we we've, we've kind of eliminated that off the name. Um, we still do, and we we do sportsman tables. We call them. Okay. Um, that was something that kind of kind of funny. Not to keep alluding back to Todd, but um, that was something Todd kind of brought up because um, as his shows evolved. We, we're, we don't, we're not, I don't, I don't know if you kind of get a, a, a kind of a sense of maybe there's junk there, you know, when you say flea market, I don't know how, I don't know how else to say it, but you kind of get that feeling like maybe it's not the best stuff. And our vendors had really nice stuff, you know, a lot of them had mm-hmm. some antique stuff. And, and so we kind of felt like we were shortchanging them by calling it a flea market. Um, so we, we eliminated that off of, we do still have the sportsman tables. Guys will still be selling their own stuff. Um, we have probably about five or six of those at this point. Um, so that stuff will still be there, but just cause it's not on the name anymore. We just, we kind of refined the name a little bit down to just the outdoor expo. Right. And we figured that encompasses everything that we have and it doesn't take away from what, what's there, you know, their vendors, there, there are vendors just like anybody else. Yeah. Um, we don't want, want them to feel like they're not. Um, so that's, that's something too, that I've been trying to build that up more. Um, it's been hit or miss some years. We've had a lot of them, other years we haven't. I guess that kind of goes by how much the guys sell. Guys had good years yeah. at our show and sold a lot of their stuff, so they got to right. replenish by the new stuff and mm-hmm. wait to get rid of. But um, yeah, we still we will still have that there. Um, like like you said, the, the building for the ladies with the crafts and all that stuff. Um, lots of raffles. Um, we do have a lot of raffles. Uh, yeah, my wife absolutely loves the raffles. Loves actually. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely loves. Yeah, it. we do good with the Chinese auction. We've got gun raffles. Um, we'll be running gun tables all weekend long. Um, our car arms is, is our gun dealer up there for that. Um, so he's, he's got probably about 15 to 20 guns per table. Um, so we'll be running them all nice. weekend. So nice. you'll have your choice at a table that and there won't be, we do got a couple guns that are specific. We're going to be raffling. Um, we've got a, uh, Kimber micro nine in rose gold. That's a special edition. Oh, wow. Really, really pretty, pretty. gun. Uh, we're going to be raffling that on its own ticket. And then we've got a uh, Charles daily side-by-side 20 gauge. that's oh, nice. all engraved and, it's really nice too. So we're going to be giving those two away separately. Those won't be on the gun table, but then he's bringing a lot of nice guns for the gun table as well. So um, basically, there's there's something for everybody. I was just going to say, so it's it's a well rounded event. Uh, we don't want to call this, you know, just an outdoor show because it's not that. It's this is this is an event. You know, there's yep. you've got entertainment, you have food, you have vendors. 
you know, you have, uh, I, 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 I enjoy, you know, the kickoff in the morning when you have the parade that starts, that runs right down through the middle and, you know, you have the flags and, and the veterans and all that there. And that's really cool. And yeah, yeah I'm glad you, know, you brought that up. Cause actually this year, um, I believe we've got at least two, maybe three Legion, uh, honor guards that are going to be oh, in attendance. Wow, that's right. awesome. so, that, so that's pretty cool. Um, I was trying to work something to try to get the marching band there. I want that's that's going to be my goal. I'm hoping that we don't conflict with stuff because um, my daughter's in the marching band, and I thought it'd be really cool to have Mount my, my Pleasant High School marching yeah. band come, yeah. come down there and do the do the national anthem. Uh, but they are they have another event, so they can't be there. But we got AJ Shawley to sing the national anthem. So that's awesome. So AJ's going to sing it live. Um, we're still going to have the, the honor guard bring the flag down and all that. We'll do their whole their whole program and. Uh, that's something that that kind of came to be because um, obviously with with the military side of it, um, but one of my big helpers, he's in the Sons of the Legion, and the Legion's been been big at helping us. So that was kind of the, the give back. Um, they they we help them with their car show. They help us with that. We kind of help each other. Um, that's become kind of our focal point. That's something that I I want to keep expanding on every year. Um, that opening ceremony because I yeah. think that's something that. That's it's got everybody's unique. attention. It's unique, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's something yeah. definitely unique. It um, is. Yeah, everybody plays a national anthem at their show in the morning, but it's a recorded version, and mm -hmm. you know, not many people getting getting AJ Shelley to sing yeah, it. And, yeah, yeah. And, and to have all that, I mean, they're going to do the gun salute, taps, oh, wow. you know, everything. I mean, it's it's a big thing. They they really take pride in it. They don't get to do that as much. You know, their guys are getting older, so that's an event where they can yeah. all get together and and. Yeah. Give their give their yeah, salute. Yeah, and they so, have everybody's yeah. attention. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. that's a cool thing that yeah. you're doing there with that yeah. for sure. Yeah. Do um now do many of your vendors stay there at all? Do they camp there at all? Do they have campers <laughs> or <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean we, we offer we did this that's something over the last couple of years that we've started to offer. Um if you're coming a distance to save on a hotel room, if you got a camper, there are hookups up there um that you can you can hook up on the grounds. Um I know where you're going with it. We, we talked earlier. <laughs> we were uh, but we, we, was like, come yeah, on, get yeah, it. We, we definitely got to put this out there, though. Yeah. Um, I did have a vendor. Uh, first year he was with us was last year. Uh, he brought his camper and everything. And he came early because he's got a big setup. And we were winding down for the night. And he, he said his goodbyes to us. And he went to his camper. And me being scatterbrained because of setup, I... I forgot he was in there basically. <laughs> and I, I was the last one out the gate. I locked the gate and went home and I went to bed. And when I come up in the morning, I saw him getting out of the camper as I'm unlocking the gate. I thought, well, I locked him in last night. <laughs> I said, so, so I went over to him and I apologized and he, he laughed and he said, I didn't know you. He said, I had no idea. He said, when he said, when I go in and crash for the night, he said, I'm done. He, he said, he said, he, he said, I didn't come out. He said, everything I need's in there. He said, yeah. I don't got to come out. He's like, and I said, I kind of felt bad. I said, you know, what if you'd have needed help or something? He's like, well, you'd have Drug found me in the morning, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but no, nah, it was it was kind of funny that uh, well, we've had a couple people take us up on that. You know, if you're coming, if you're listening to this and you didn't, you missed that on the application. I think we, you know, we did add it to the application this year. It's a very small fee. I think it's only like 25 bucks, uh, basically charging what the, what the fair charges us just to cover their, their electric right. and, and water mm -hmm. at the pool. I mean, your there. fee's for everything from the ticket to this to, I mean, reason. I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, you're doing this to get people there. Like you're, you're almost like saying, Hey, what, what else do you have to do this weekend? Come here. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's costing you next to nothing. Yeah. And that's the cool thing because yeah. You know, you take you, nowadays with the costs of everything rising, it's hard for families to go somewhere and not spend hundreds upon hundreds of dollars just to have entertainment oh, for their kids. I mean, you can't yeah. go to a sporting event, you know, uh, you know, down down in the city for oh, my no. goodness. By the time you pay parking and everything else, you're paying five, six, seven hundred bucks. So you are putting together something that is a whole family event. There's literally something for everyone. Unless you want to buy gutters, and we'll talk about that because <laughs> yeah. I think it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, you're not going to buy gutters at my show. But, <laughs> no. but you're putting something together for everyone, and you're doing it on a level to where even, you know, a family that maybe isn't as fortunate, you know, maybe they don't have a whole lot of money, they can still attend. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And that's, I mean, so, sometimes that's that's who we need to get to. Yeah. Um, because a lot, of, a lot of these families, you know, they see it's it, it, the price, and they look the price, well, Hey, let's you know, let's go up and check it out. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that maybe never even got into fishing. We've had so many people come up there, and maybe not even the youngest kids, but 
we've had a lot of a lot of people say this is my my son's first fish he's ever caught mm -hmm. and to me it blows my mind that you know an eight nine ten year old this is their first yeah. fish but i'm like that just just blows my mind so the fact that they're able to come up there and, and catch a trout and the look on some of these kids some of them want to keep it I, I mean i got bags and i let them take them what they do in a money lever i don't know them kids will carry that fish around all day happier than hell <laughs> you know and but to me, in the back of their mind, they're always going to remember Leave what it in it, the what, trunk of the car. Yeah, oh yeah, gonna they're always going to remember what that felt like to catch that first fish, and then they may not go back to that for five years. You know, if they don't yeah. have somebody to, to take them and show them, or or ten years, and then they go back. And like, yeah, I remember that, and it strikes something in them. You know, what right? I mean? So, and I, I just think that that's, I mean, that that's our big goal, obviously, as the kids, and we we've said it before. Like, if if it meant breaking even on the whole show and the kids were happy that's what we're there for that's what that's, yeah. that's, what, that's, we're doing. that's what started this yeah. with your brother absolutely. I mean, absolutely you know they, that and it's cool you know you're doing all that for the kids uh <laughs> let me check the light, me check the light <laughs> real know, quick. I, yeah sure <laughs> i thought we had the other lights on we're gonna keep everything rolling but <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep everything rolling <laughs> sorry talking, yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna keep going here I, I, we're unscripted did you not yeah. pay the talking. light bill ken i mean what's <laughs> me? going on here you know I, I don't know who was responsible for this but somebody apparently I, didn't pay the light bill. i would say this is just par for the course this wouldn't happen to anybody else but me this is this is when I'm here, yeah. I yeah, lights I'm like, off. How yeah. much longer do we have before that one says nope. no? This one says we're past still. Oh, past good. Well. Yeah. <laughs> the panic the, look on his face. I don't know. We uh, not nothing's wrong. We just have some some extra friends that you know maybe come around and they show up. Yeah. But last as long. We're good on this one. Well, that's good. <laughs> Anyways, we'll, we'll be able to get through this. But yeah. Uh, yeah. so so with the kids. uh it's it's cool that all the things you're doing and and I think one of the things that I noticed that the uh, I'll tell you from you'd be surprised I'll tell you what the video still looks great so. yeah so <laughs> the um, we're playing it all we're gonna keep it all all right we're all about hey, this is work, a, hey. this is you That's know we're, we're not scripted you know we just roll with the punches whatever happens happens yep. That's the one thing you know there's no retakes no retakes yeah, yeah that's you know we screw up much we screw how we up, we just want to keep roll it rolling it, but uh, yeah, that's I that kind of laugh because our our commercial that we have is coming out on Fox or came out on Fox here a couple of days ago and and when I was talking to Ross from Fox about when it was going to be on and what our schedule was and he said. He said, you know, I'll try to fit it in some other places for you, too. He goes, he goes, would you be opposed to it being on with, you know, during a Jerry Springer episode? And I said, <laughs> I said, no, that's perfect. I said, if you know yeah, anything not? about my family and the way things go, I said, Jerry Springer would probably be the demographic we need to, we, we needed to show. Like, I said, no, I got no problem with that at all. But that's that, awesome, kind of man. funny. You say that's just the, the way things go. But um, yeah, it happens sometimes. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, that's all part yeah. of it. That's, but, uh, that's why we are here. Absolutely. What I was saying, you know, before we <laughs> forgot to pay the light bill, with the with the kids, the scavenger hunt, you know, that's another thing you guys do with them. And I seen, I didn't know it was going on at first. I didn't either. I was so, so like all these confused. little kids are like staring at me. And I'm like, what, you want a bow? I mean, like, I'm like, and I'm like, what? And then I'm realizing they're like, they're showing me that they're looking for stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool. Yeah. We, so that was a cool thing you were doing. Yeah. We got to refine that a little bit this year. We're, we're working on the final, final details of that. But um, one thing we did learn is we need a cheat sheet for the parents because some of the parents were getting really frustrated that they couldn't find the last one or two. Uh, and the kids were very relentless. They didn't want to give up till they got them all because we, we just told, we, we had it set up that, you know, when you get, when you find them all, you bring it, drop it in the box. And we're going to give, give a poll for a prize, had them right. sign their name on it, whatever. And so they weren't leaving. They, 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 had no, them they, all. they didn't want to give up. And there, well, there, and there was some frustrated Lynn parents. Jace were like, yeah, they my were grand. finding it's... everything on that list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're going to refine it a little bit. And we're going to have a cheat sheet for the parents this year that <laughs> that they can they'll know at least what building it is and you know kind of that that way that way. And the whole point of doing the scavenger hunt um, was to get the parents to every booth. Like that was kind of our thing. It was a a trade off for the you know the kids would enjoy it as far as trying to find it and the chance to win the prize that we were going to give whatever it was. But it also made the kids drag the parents to see the booths. That way, everybody got exposure. Yeah. Um, right. So it was it was kind of a good thing for the you know the vendors. That was kind of our way to to help the vendors to try to push too. And we were figuring all that out the the year. I know you had brought it to my attention before about you know signage and stuff. And it was we went and we keep adding more signage and everything. And that was just another way to get get people in all the buildings. Yeah, that's smart. So yeah, that, was, that yeah. was definitely a good idea because the kids enjoyed it. I, you know, the parents enjoyed it. I mean, every, they had smiles on their faces. Like you're kind of like. 
You don't want to tell them where it's at, but you see it, but you're kind of like, hey, look that direction. Yeah. And it, it, yes. that was cool. So, yeah, it's good to see that. And like I said, you know, what you're doing with everything as far as getting everybody in the family involved. I mean, that's that's an awesome thing. And and we're looking forward to being there. It's, yeah, it's I absolutely. think it's going to be it's I really gonna be enjoyed a it. blast. The first year that I went was 2022. And it's just the, the potential for it is endless oh, it's it's growing every year yeah yeah and that's and we have i mean it's it it's it, sometimes it seems like it's it's a struggle you know this this year this is going to be a struggle or this year we're trying to build this up and it's just a new set of headaches and mm-hmm. but everything comes together in the end and that's i mean that's my organization that's my board that's my volunteers we have a very dedicated group of people and it's every year we get a, we get a few more that want to help and you know come on but the majority have been with me since day one when i first had this crazy idea and 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 popped it to them you know we we called a meeting and told everybody you know anybody wants to help with this you know kind of gave a rundown of what we wanted to do and most everybody that that was there that first that first meeting has been there till today you know what i mean and we we've lost a few here and there just you know unfortunately lost a few right uh, but you just it's just crazy. I mean, to think where we've come in, in six oh, years, I, I can honestly yeah. say when we started this six years ago, I never, I thought it was a year or two thing, you know, we're going to raise a little bit of money. We're going to give it out and it's going to fizzle out and, you know, try to figure something else out or that's going to be it. Um, you know, we've done, we did some trout stockings with tag trout to, you know, did that as a contest and, you know, we thought maybe we'd expand on that and, this just keeps keeps going. Yeah, it's just snowballing. It, it, it just keeps it is. And, and like we talked about the mega ticket, you know, we said maybe down the road someday. Not that we ever feel that we'll get as big as the Jurassic Classic or anything, but that's kind of what the ticket's modeled off of. Right. Um, in fact, Austin, when he was coming up with the idea for it, and that's one thing I can say, I have, I've never talked to those guys from out there, but he did. He talked to one of the guys that, that organizes that event, and they were phenomenal. Like he told them what we were doing and they were like, well, here's, here's something you can try. Here's something you can try. Right. And the guy gave him his personal cell phone number and said, call me anytime. And he said, I don't care if you're in the middle of your show and you have a question about how to do something. He said, call me. He said, that's what the outdoor industry is about. He said, I'm not trying to hide anything. He goes, right. you know, they've got a multi-million dollar budget there every year. He goes, so we're our our problems are different than your yeah. problems right. or our, you know, our stuff's different than yours, but we went through it too. We started, we had to start somewhere. You know, so that's kind of what we're kind of modeling the ticket off of that. And then we're just going to keep building the show the way we build it. I mean, we're obviously recently there's been some competition in the area, but our big thing, like we had talked about, what sets us apart is our people and why we do it. Uh, right. You know, and, I mean, and like I was absolutely. joking there before about the gutters, <laughs> I've always said what I love about your show is or your event is it is different in the fact that. It is 100% outdoors. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know that you're the type of guy that you want to try to please everybody, but I already know that if a guy comes to you and says, hey, I want to sell gutters and windows at your event, the answer is no. No, <laughs> and, we, and we've and we already, and I, I said, I will I will t- try every way to twist it outdoors if there's an outdoor thing to it that somebody could benefit from because I don't want somebody to miss something that should be there, but – like this year we had we did we had solar panel people call us we've had you know different ones call us and it's just i i told them i said if it comes to the point where i need that to make a show i'm done yeah. i it's just it's not worth it to put the headache into it at that point to have more people upset because it's not the show that they that they're used to and I, and we've and seen you guys it we don't we, need it we've driven no we we don't this year, we we drove a couple hours to go to some outdoor shows, and I literally, we walked through the one, and I was like, the Chico show is so much better than yeah. this one. We, we literally walked out, and we were way. like, Chico show would outperform this. Yeah. And that's what we're I'm it's trying to well get. a well-renowned, nation-known yeah. show. I mean, I'm trying to get out to, to different shows, too, to see, and it's not that necessarily I want to go out and steal their ideas or this or that. I mean, a lot of the stuff we've come up with, we've come up with on our own. Like, this is, I mean, yeah, we... I'm not gonna lie. We do we we do go to shows. We're outdoorsmen too, right? You're gonna see things. You're gonna pick things up. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. But our show is always gonna revolve around what we do, and we're not necessarily gonna make a million dollars, or you know, we're not gonna have that that big name country band playing there or whatever. But we know in the end, if we're able to make the money we make, we're able to fund the organizations that we want to fund. 
That's that's what we're about. That's, that's, you stick, and you're sticking to your roots. If yes. we ever yeah. if we ever 100%. get to that point, yeah. it would be great to be able to give that kind of money out. But honestly, I mean, I feel really good about giving a five hundred dollar check here, you know, five hundred dollar check there because we're helping everybody nowadays. I mean, that's not a lot of money, but to a lot of organizations that are struggling. Absolutely. That, 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 can, huge, that can push yeah. you over. Huge, yeah. um, you know, like I said, with these shooting teams and stuff, they're all new. They're trying to get off the ground. We know what a case of ammo costs. Oh. So he, that's that's a case of ammo for a kid. Yeah. You know, that gets him through a season for 500 bucks, and that's one kid. So, mm-hmm. you know, that, that kind of stuff is what we're looking to just continue. We want yeah. to keep as much of it local, but we also want to start picking those certain organizations that have the same values as us and, and, and start helping them. We've sent a little bit outside the area, but, I mean, ultimately – we grew up in this area where we lived our whole life in Western PA. We want to see that everything thrive here. You know, we want, yeah. we, we want to bring kids in here because you got to start. You, if, there are so many people in our area, even as big of a hunting area as it is and a fishing, you know, we still run into so many people that, that have never held a fishing rod and, and stuff like that blows my mind because it's second nature to us. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, I mean, going back to, you know, a little bit of our history growing up, um, you know, some of the stuff that me and my brother from the time that I was old enough to take him out hunting, you know, this is long before mentor hunting and all that. I mean, my dad would, would take him out and set with him. You know, I'm, I'm 200 yards away from dad, you know, cause I was still kind of young at the time and, and dad would set us where he could see us both and he'd make, and he'd, he'd drive for us. He'd just make a circle and he'd, yeah, I'm gonna push something into you and, you know, and that then it just kept growing and expanding on it. Then when when Dad maybe couldn't go, I would take I would take Andy, and you know, and then he, and then he started taking his friends, and it just some of the stuff we we've done over the years, and and just I, I look back, and that's the only thing that hurts me sometimes is is the stuff that we didn't get to do. I mean, we did a lot, we hunted a lot, we fished a lot. Um, our camp up in Potter County, that's like it's that's a second home, um, and and I, I miss the fact that he's not getting to see that, but. Um, one of the funny stories I, I'll throw out there about him because I, I I wanted to to bring a couple of funny stories up because if you, you try to paint a picture of who he was, um, he was very charismatic, very outgoing. Um, I remember, you know, we, I said about playing on the the name, the Ch- the Chico name. He has, and I still have it to this day. He's got a sombrero. He's got a poncho. <laughs> I, I remember. Um, we were at Norvell Fire Hall for the, the 75th anniversary, and he wasn't feeling no pain that day, I can tell you that. But he was in that sombrero. <laughs> he had sunglasses on. He had a big old stogie, <laughs> and he had that poncho on. And, and nobody knew who he was when he first walked up. Nobody wanted to talk really? to him. Really? <laughs> I mean, yeah, he parked for like, Who's this guy? Come walking in like that. <laughs> And when he got up there and, and took the glasses off and they just lost it. And he was in that all day long. And that was just, I mean, so the name stuck. I mean, it was, right. the name wasn't going anywhere at that point. My grandfather brought that stuff back from a trip to New Mexico years ago. Uh-huh. And that's, it sat in his basement for the longest time. And well, he knew, I mean, he went and got that stuff and put it on. And that was just, just funny as hell. But um, I, I, I'll never forget that. But um, just... It, that, I mean, that was the kind of person he was. He, yeah. he was going to make you laugh, but he but he'd also be the one to, to drop his hat and be there for you in, in, in a heartbeat. Um, he, we we were hunting one time. Um, I was probably I actually wanted to bring the head. I was going to bring the head, and I didn't I didn't bring it. But um, we were hunting up in in Kecksburg <laughs> off of Mom's property, and we'd been out all morning hunting. And we sat stopped sat down to eat lunch, and he said, "What do you want to do?" He said, "I ain't seen no deer." I didn't see no deer. He said, "Why don't let's just make we'll just finish our loop." Like we would just walk and walk and walk. I mean, we've done so much. If, if we'd have just sat, sometimes we probably would have seen a lot more. <laughs> oh yeah. But we just we'd sit in the morning and then we just we just wanted to walk. Like we we would explore into the rocks and, and bear caves and we were just going. And so we sat down at eight and and he said, well, "Let's just keep walking. You know, do our normal circle and we'll go back down to the house to call it a day." And we didn't walk 50 yards and up, up jumped these two deer. I mean, they were, they had to have been sitting there watching us eat <laughs> uh-huh. and, and we were just talking normal. We weren't trying to be quiet or nothing. Cause at that point we were kind of frustrated Yeah, Then we're going to call it a day. And so we just, them deer jumped up and he shot, I shot the buck went down over. There was a buck in the doe. The buck 
come down around me. I shot again, and it went down. He shot at a doe going up the hill, and I mean, we're just. I'm I'm probably I was still in high school, and he's younger, you know. We're shooting, and so when the, when the shooting stopped, I said, "He goes, did you get it?" And I said, "I was going to ask you to say it." <laughs> I said, "I think the buck's down." I said, "How about the doe?" He's like, "Nah." He's like, "I missed her." So we get on, we start digging around, we find this buck. I'm telling you, I don't I don't know if I ever showed you a picture of it. And it it was it was a a nice buck. It was all busted up. It was I mean it was a fighter. It had a big gouge across its nose. Like oh, wow. when we took that when we drug that deer out of the woods and put it in a truck and did our parade, nobody had ever seen that buck. And really? nobody I talked to up there had, had ever and that was before trail cameras got real big and right. stuff. Mm-hmm. But you still had your guys that knew what deer were out there. Mm-hmm. The guys yeah, usually the everybody guy. knows what deer's around. Yeah, everything, yeah. yeah, nobody saw that deer, and I just I laugh to this day because when we when we drug it, we got to it. He said, he said, oh, I, you know, it's my deer. And I said, what do you mean it's your deer? I said, I dropped it. He's like, oh, he's like, my shot would have killed it. It was going to die anyway. I said, it was still <laughs> running when I shot it. So we we argued about it a little bit, and and me being the older brother, I said, well, I said. I'm going to tag it. So I tagged it. I said, it don't matter who tags it, whatever. So we tagged it. We took it out, did our parade. My dad said, well, you can, you can get it mounted. And I said, nah. I said, I don't know. It's all busted up. I mean, it's big. One side's all palmated and it's, it's really cool. Uh, I said, I don't know. It's cool, but I don't, my dad's like, yeah. And he's like, we'll get it mounted. So Jim Novotny, who does Norvell pizza now, he's yeah. a taxidermist. <laughs> we took it to Jim, Jim mounted it. And they, he called to say it was done. And it's like, that dad said, hey, deer is done. He, and dad said, I'm going to pay for it. He said, just go pick it up. Well, I went over, picked it, get, pick it up. And Jim's like, we didn't pay for it yet. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll pay for it just so I can take it. And yeah, dad can pay me back later. And so I teased Andy. I said, hey, uh, you paying for half of that rack or what? And he's like, it's your deer. No, you said it's your deer. Oh, <laughs> so, but, but we always, we always joke back and forth. But that's one of my best hunting memories ever because. That's great. I don't know if his shot would have killed it. I don't know, but <laughs> but it was one of them things that we argued about for till the day he died. We argued about it, mm-hmm. and I still have. I got the deer hanging in my shed. Um, I, I wish I'd have brought it because it would have been been cool. I'll, I'll, oh, sh- yeah. I'll, I'll bring it to the show and show. Yeah, you, you have to give mm-hmm. us a picture of that but for it, sure. Yeah, but it's 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 just an awesome awesome story, and it was like, and that was probably, I don't know, that might be one of the last, like. Not, I mean, not the last time we hunted together, but like that was just one of them last memories that that will always stick. Yeah, it sticks. We in your had head. a lot of we had a lot of other hunting trips after that. You know, hunted up in Potter County and stuff. Um, he shot one up there one year. I'll, I'll remember forever. He was he was still a junior hunter. He was young. We'd been hunting the morning. We came back in and and one of the neighbors come over. We're we're napping and the neighbor comes over, and knocks on the door, and he says, "Hey, he says you got a junior hunter in here, right?" I said, "Yeah." He says, "Come on." He says. Grab your gun, get your orange on, let's go. Said, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, he's going to get a deer. Okay. So he puts his orange on. Me and dad get 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 up. We throw an orange vest on and we're following him. And they get on the creek. We're watching him go to property to property and we catch up with him. And there's a, there's a buck laying in the, in, in the weeds. And they're like, it's been here all day. They're like, we got we're, somebody shooting it. You know, you're, you're the only one. It's a small buck. You're, you're shooting it. Mm-hmm. So he get, they take him down, he gets off the quad, he walks over, they get him set up, and he shoots his deer, and he's all excited and everything. <laughs> we go to skin it out, it's all full of gangrene. Oh, uh, some, some, somebody, Something must have hit it. Somebody yeah, hit it, somebody yeah. hit it, you know, or it got hit by a car, or, got, or had an arrow in it or something, and you couldn't tell. I mean, it, it right. was laying her head up and everything, mm-hmm. he shot, but it was, but that was his first buck, and it was it was kind of cool, because they're, they're good friends of ours up there at, at camp, and he got to be really good friends with all those guys, and they they always would tease him. You know, we got you your first buck, you know, and he's, he's well, it wasn't really really hunting, but you know, but he, but it, but he, he was, was out he, there, but he was excited. So that's awesome. But that's yeah, good. I mean, he was just I, he 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 loved the outdoors. He did, and that's that's where it all stems from. I mean, we we used to spend so much time. Like I said, we'd we'd leave in the morning and and take off off the mountain, and, and I don't even know how much property's up there um, at at mom's old house, but we just we were out constantly and as i said a little bit earlier like we would carry we were carrying 22s when we probably shouldn't have been and but that we knew you know right and dad told us you, he, you had the respect you had to respect yeah. me and and we did and and that's why i i want to keep pushing kids into that i mean i didn't have to push my son into it he just he, he took to it 
but there's so many kids out there and that's that's just that's our big mm-hmm. focus you know getting the kids out and it, it the, the growth that the show has had too just really shows the positive mark on the community too yeah you know yeah, you, you turn the news on or you're scrolling you're on the internet and it's bad things and bad things and then you separate yourself from that and it really makes you realize you know hey you know it's this community is great you know in this local area to show to mm-hmm. Because yeah. of how you guys have grown so yeah, and much, I and that's another thing. I mean, I can't say enough about the community that that's backing us. Mm-hmm. Um, all our sponsors, like I mean, we started out the first year, a couple of sponsors, and you know, and then every year it's been a couple more, a couple more, and it's and it's always it's always been somebody who's been to the show or somebody that's gotten involved went to these organizations and said, "Listen, this is a pretty cool thing they got going on here. I think you should get involved." Um, you know. Toyota Greensburg. That that was you. Uh, yeah, Brian Moore, Ryan yeah. Halterman. Awesome people. I got, I, yeah. I got, I got a, I, we're I got we're a happy call, to be I, partnered I with them. Call, I got a call one day. I looked at my phone. Chris, Chris DePerno. What's up, Chris? Hey, you need to talk to this guy right now. This is Brian Moore, general manager of Toyota. Here, talk to him. So I'm talking to him on Chris's phone, and he's like, hey, I hear you're, you're getting an outdoor show going. He goes, why don't you stop up and talk to me? We want to we want to talk about this. And the rest is history. Yeah. I mean, that was that was all your doings, and they've been they've been great. I I'm I was glad to see when you know they were oh, yeah. doing you guys. They're fantastic. They're behind us, they yeah. are they are great guys, and I I can't say enough. I mean, I I drive a Toyota. I drive a Toyota now. I didn't I didn't when I met him. I drive a Toyota yeah. now, and, and I'll probably drive Toyota the rest of my life. But, the trend. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Around here, there's there's a lot, a lot of Toyota. Lot of Toyota. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's funny over uh, Easter Sunday, with the exception, I think of. Your grandfather's yeah. Cadillac sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> we look over in my my driveway, and there are what seven or eight Toyotas sitting mm-hmm. there. Yep. We all have them, you know. They, you know, they're just great vehicles. But but back to what you were saying, just great people. Great but, people. And that's the thing with Brian is you know when you you get involved with someone like him, and he's an outdoorsman, and he's uh, you know very adamant about helping. Anybody that's going to do anything to help the community and help the kids, mm-hmm. and, you know, he's he's all about that. You know, yeah. if you know, known that you know you're you're a local local to him, and mm-hmm. and he's like, yeah, I, I want to be part of it. And, and that's, that's that's like Ryan awesome. and Brian are at the show, yeah, pretty much the whole time. Uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Like, it's not like they right. just sponsor it right. and say like have fun. Like they're yeah. there, no, and, they and have, that's they that's a thing or two there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, a lot of times with corporate sponsors and that, you'll you'll get the these sponsorships, and you don't get to know the people behind the logo. Right uh, or be you know behind that emblem, whatever you want to call it. But with this, you know, this company and you know with Toyota Greensburg and Brian Moore, he's he's right there with us. Oh, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. having yeah. a beer with you. Yeah. You know, oh, and that's absolutely. that's what's absolutely. awesome. Yeah. We had it. we had a good time with Brian and and I mean, I, I that's the only and it sounds cliche, but that's the only car dealership I ever I felt comfortable walking into. Uh, yeah, that's be, what I because said. like I mean, I hate buying cars. I, I'm not gonna lie, I hate Nobody buying cars. Can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but. When you go up there, it's it's not it's not like you're buying a car. I mean, it's the relationship. Yeah. They, they right. know it's when the you co- show, they know right. when you come in. I mean, when I bought my truck, I I saw it online. I called Ryan about it. He said, "Yeah, it's it it'll be ready when you get here. Come up, take a look at yep. it." I went up. He had everything ready. I mean, he had numbers ready for me awesome. and everything before I even you know. And and he said, "Okay, well, where do you where do you need to be?" And he said, "Well, okay, here's you know here's where I'm at with it." And and we we were right there. I mean, I just and and those guys. I walk in there and it's, I just feel like I'm walking in the family there too. That's yeah. just what I said. And it's, I, I feel that way about a lot of our sponsors. Um, you know, some of them have, have come through different avenues and some of them, like you said, some of them I've never met, you know, and, and I, I don't feel like, I mean, I, I'd like to meet these people, but some of them, the people that have got us a sponsorship, they're the one that's the face of that organization right. that, that I'm going to mm-hmm. see every day. And the reason we got them is because of what we do. And, and right. And we're always looking for more, um, you know, never turn anybody away. Um, I mean, our budget, like I said, is, is based solely on, on the sponsors and, and, and what we, what we do throughout the year. Um, we got a, a gun bash going to be coming up We're we're actually, it's been in the works here. Um, a couple of my guys have really been, been pushing for that. They, they wanted to do one and see how that's, it goes. that's outside of this event yeah so that's going to be outside, gonna do in outside the fall. of this event that'll be in october so you know kind of follow our page go on and like our page and follow that um we do put a lot of stuff on social media 
Uh, that's been big for us. Austin and Keegan do a lot with it. This this year we brought Steve Rocco on and gave him control of the page a little bit too to to do some stuff, and he did our commercial and all that. So um, that's been a big thing. Like we're we're finding out that you know the TV advertising is good. We need that. Mm-hmm. We've done radio before, but social media has just been it's been crazy. I was, yeah. I was telling it's you big. before we came up, yeah. like I think we. Uh, I think we're over like 7,000 in four days since Steve boosted the video of the commercial. I think we've gotten like 7,400 likes on it in four days. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's great. And and every day my phone's blowing up with more people that are following a page. And Mm -hmm. I've never seen these people are people that I don't like. Initially, when we when the page started, you kind of know everybody. Yeah. Now it's to the point where I don't even know where these people are coming from. Like it's it's a great thing, and it, it means we're getting reach. It means we're getting out there. Um, it's it's hard to believe the reach that we've gotten already, because like you, not that it's a common common word or common name online, but. If you punch in Chico, we're coming up somehow. Yeah. It's, it's right. coming up, yeah, right. And that's maybe that's kind of a maybe it was kind of his way of telling us to what what to do to to, to make this work. But um, yeah, it just it, it, I just can't believe wh- where it pops up and people that'll see us. I mean, we just got these shirts made, and you know, people are like, I, I know that logo, right? Like, I've mm-hmm. seen that, you know. Yeah, it stands I'll, out. I'll be at different different places, and people, are, and, and then we set up at the fair, you know, at at, at the at the Westmoreland Fair, and and people walk up and they're like, I've seen that that logo. And then they'll stop and they'll say, well, tell me about it. You know, what's it about? And we got a little sign there and it kind of tells the story of it and everything. And, and you start talking and they're like, yeah, I had I had people tell me, they're like, boy, I wish somebody would memori- memorialize me that way. Like that's right. Like yeah. I would never have thought to memorialize somebody with an outdoor show like or with something. Mm-hmm. So um, that's something we, we've kind of. We added a memorial wall at the show. Um, you can bring a picture of your your loved one or your old hunting partner. I told people, I said, bring me a picture of your dog. Yeah. Like like a lot a lot of guys, yeah. you, a lot of guys hunting dog is, oh, yeah. is their best friend. Like Absolutely. you know, I I my dog's not a hunting dog, but she's she's my best friend. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I said, bring you know, bring those pictures. We started. We all put pictures of our loved ones up on the, on the wall, and every year we add to it. The, bring pictures that you don't mind leaving, and we'll put them up every year. Yeah. We added a memorial wall on the on the page. It's on our website, um, so that that kind of stuff is like. I mean, we're we're about the that you know the the whole family aspect of it. The you know the the I don't know what you want to say, but like the the memorial side. Like we we want to remember where we came from, who got us here. Yeah, that kind the of roots. Thing. The roots, yeah. and, and that's what we're about. I yeah. I don't think there's enough of that anymore. I mean, honestly, I can tell you. I don't know a lot of my my family outside of the ones that that I'm close with, and you see that a lot. And it's a shame because my relatives that knew all that stuff are gone, and now you don't, you don't get that back. So yeah. Yeah, make it's, the make the memories now and and hold those memories, like, you especially can, you with yeah. you know with grandkids and you know, my kids don't have have kids yet; they're young yet. But make those memories and and hold that stuff. Like we we I mean we've got and there's stuff that you you don't even think about until you're there and I, mm-hmm. I i saw rob did you know a little little video of going back to where he hunted with his grandfather mm-hmm. and you don't like i'll be up in potter county and like i didn't hunt i didn't get to hunt a lot with my grandfather up there but there's places up there that it just it's just weird like right i remember we were there like i was younger and i remember and then stuff will come back to me and it's like it it just being out in the woods does that to you. It's you funny know? how yeah. that happens. It, it, I can remember like, the neighborhood yeah. I grew up in when I was a kid. Whenever I was little, I thought, man, this was, it was a pretty big neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And I ride past there now, and it's like, it seems so small. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. it just yeah. It doesn't seem like, I don't know. Uh, I'd love to go back to I mean, where... even the hills seem like they were steeper than they are. <laughs> right. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's definitely different. But, yeah. Uh, I'd, yeah. I'd love to go back to where my dad started us right started me rifle hunting i was going out with my pap and my uncle and my yeah. dad and then my cousin um up in glen ritchie up in clearfield okay um yeah. i believe like they ended up not mining it but i think they ended up logging a lot of it okay yeah. so it was just we went up there for the first couple of years and i'll never forget and we talked about this a little bit on our episode with rob just about you never forget like your old hunting memories with right with your dad or you know looking forward to memory hunting memories with your kids i mean you never forget them i remember one day we got just this random snow squall just came in and we're just sitting there laughing like you'd think like oh this is miserable but you're not right it's like it's an experience that you you can laugh off and yeah, that you can yeah. remember forever and, and that's what i mean for for years like 
you know, I hunted with my dad a lot. And then I kind of, as I got older, I kind of started doing my own thing. You, you start working, you're not hot as much. Andy would hunt with him. And then it got to the point where, you know, we were both kind of gone and dad kind of, kind of was losing interest, you know, a little bit. I, I think he was kind of losing it to where he just didn't have that drive to go out anymore. And we lucked out and I, I, I got into a piece of property that, that we're allowed to hunt. It's, you know, right there near the fairgrounds. And it's, it's not by any means, you know, it's a small piece. It's a field basically with mm -hmm. a couple little wood lines and, but there's no lack of deer there, you know, and, and <laughs> that's and, what matters. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I'm not even ashamed to say it like, God, like oh, that, that's not hunting. Oh, it's hunting. You know, I go out and sit in the blind. We shoot, we, my son, he, he hunts with a compound bow now. He got into hunting, which I got to get it down here and get it restrung for him. It's an older <laughs> bow, but, um, he, he's been shooting the hell out of that. Yeah. I'm shooting a crossbow and I ain't ashamed to say it. And I'm, uh, I'll, if it I'll get you out there, man. I'll catch ridicule. I'll catch ridicule, but, no. um, you know, I, but that's gotten me and my dad out of more. Right. I, I got, we got my dad into a crossbow because he, he can't pull a compound back. Mm -hmm. You know, he, his pride and joy years ago, he had, he had an old golden Eagle that was decked out and, that bow now ain't shit, you know, yeah. compared to what's out there. Oh, it now. changes so much. But he he didn't hunt archery, and and but then he couldn't pull it back. So he was him hauling around. I said, Dad, I said we got this property, and I said I'm telling you, I said you're going to get a deer up there. I said come out with us. So we, I mean, we laid the property out. We've got three blinds, or well, two blinds, and my my son hung a hang on stand up on the wood line. The other day, my buddy went out hunting coyotes up there. At twelve thirty at night, and there was twenty seven deer in that field. Oh, jeez! Like, what's but, coordinates to this? One? <laughs> yeah, where's yeah. 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 where? Yeah. But it, it's it, it's gotten it's gotten dad back out. It's it's rejuvenated him a little bit because so many years, you know. And and, and I laugh because my dad's the old, you know, uh, wool rich plaid jacket, <laughs> blue jeans. I mean, it you, the the shit you see in the old hunting books was my yeah. dad. My dad still to this day barely puts on camera like he doesn't he'll wear jeans he'll wear an orange you know orange jacket and he'll climb in that blind he'll put orange outside the blind like he's supposed to and he'll sit there and he'll smoke cigarettes he'll drink coffee <laughs> he'll cough everything they, they say you're not supposed to do he's doing it and he's doing it and but he's having fun he's yeah, out, as long there. As he's out there that's yeah. what my dad, my dad's called me from the blind and and i laugh at my dad's got an old flip phone he, he doesn't mm -hmm. text he doesn't and he's loud on the phone. He'll he'll call me, and I'm at work, and he'll be like, "Hey," he's like, he's like, "They were out here." He's like, "They're coming." And I'm like, "We ain't gonna get them talking to me." And he's, <laughs> and he's like, he's like, oh, "I ain't worried about." It. He's like, "I've seen so many deer this morning." He just he loves being out now. My, he'll take my son out. My son will go up on his in his stand. He'll go down there. He'll meet up with Pop later to check on him, make sure he's good. But it's it's got him back out. We got it. he just bought another crossbow off a guy that, that up at up in Potter County. Like he's just he got his first one given to him. He shot it a little bit. He's got a better one now. Like he's he's excited. He bought a range finder. Like he's all he's all about it now because That's awesome. he's missed his share. He's still trying to figure out the you know the crossbow as I am. I've missed a few. He's he's like I, I'm I'm good now. Like I'm I'm gonna do this you know and and. And it's been great because it's it's kind of rejuvenated him. Even when we go up to Potter County, he can't get up the mountain like he used to, but he still goes back in as far as he can with mm -hmm. us. And, you know, he doesn't hunt real long. He gets cold, but mm -hmm. he's still doing it. And my son's getting to make those memories with right. him. Yeah. Yeah. I have those memories. I've had memories with, with, with my dad. You know, I'm I'm glad he has memories, too, of my brother um, to hold from when they hunted. He's got tons of stories, you know what I mean? Because there were right. a lot of times that him and my dad hunt, or him and my brother hunted together when I was working. Because you hit that that nasty age, eighteen, you know, and <laughs> you're, you're an gotta, adult. Gotta now. Get, you're an adult. Yeah. You got to get a job. Yep. So and 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 I've I've worked since I was fifteen. You know what I mean? I had or fourteen. I worked in papers. I was working on a farm. You know, and so that stuff changes, and that's that's what I want kids to to realize. Like you, those are memories. You you're not you're not ever gonna be able to make it sitting in front of a tv or yeah. sitting in front of a, a video yeah. game you're not going to be able to make memories yeah. like that so yeah. get out being outdoors mm -hmm. um you know what i mean and, and it's my nephew's gotten to make some of those memories with andy before he passed and um you know they they, they got to spend some time together they were real close growing up they were closer in age than what me and austin were and they they, they made some memories and and i'll never forget he austin told this story a couple of times he told it on on the first podcast we did um 
my brother was fishing down at, well, fishing at Heckler Sportsman's, and they have a club there. So he calls Austin, and he says, hey, he says, come on down fishing with me at Heckler. And Austin, I think Austin just turned 21, um, and he, he was sleeping one off from the night before, and, <laughs> and he woke him up. He says, come on down Heckler. And Austin said, it's pouring down rain. He said, you ain't fishing. He goes, yeah, I am. He said, come on down. He said, he said, come down and fish with me. Austin said, all right. He said, I'll, I'll get up and come down. So he goes down. He comes down the hill there in the Hecla, and there ain't nobody out at the lake. It's pouring. He goes in the club, and my brother's sitting there on a the bar stool with a beer in front of him. <laughs> and he and Austin goes, I thought you were fishing. He said, I, I knew you weren't fishing. He goes, no, he goes. I wasn't fishing. He goes. I forgot my wallet. Uh, he, he goes. He goes. I need money. He goes. They, he goes. They fronted me the first beer. He goes. I need money. Austin goes. Are you shitting me? He's like, no. He's like, sit on have a beer with me. <laughs> so get your wallet. Yeah, yeah. you're so paying. Austin. Austin ends up paying for his beers, and it quit raining. He goes. All right, now we can go fishing. Mm-hmm. So, that, so they, they did. Go. They did let him go on fishing a little yeah. bit. But yeah, he. That's that's. I mean, that's that's what he was about. Yeah, like yeah, it. That's, like that's he, funny. He he. he, he like to get the most out of life and sometimes he pushed it a little further than he should have i think at times but that was that's that's a story that sticks with austin and they did fish so it's you know it's, it's, yeah. it's outdoors it's, it's an outdoor yeah. memory absolutely um, but it's it's just yeah it's, it's i wish i'd have had more more time i mean growing up we were we were close growing up and then you life life hits you and and things happen and you and you you don't get to spend as much time together and and i look back and like Lachlan Town seemed so far away, like you said. Like it seemed like, oh, that's it's so hard for me to get there after work to see him or this or that. But after he passed, I spent two days cleaning out his house, running back and forth from Lachlan Town to Norvelt. Like, yeah, like I, it was, I, I should have done that yeah. early on, you know. And looking back at stuff like that, I mean, he's got two kids that didn't really get to know him. You know, they were young when he passed, uh, he, so. Hmm they don't have a lot of memories of him. So I, I guess that's, that's what my big driving thing is here is just, just trying to get kids to realize that, you know, life's so short, like get out there and, and, and enjoy yeah. what, what God give us because you just, like you said, there's, there's things that you're going to see out there that, I mean, the worst day of hunting I've ever had, there's always something to take, take home with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You say it's always better than, you know, going to work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, shit out I, there. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen, I've seen some really nice buck get away from me, but I saw them. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. have seen it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, I, I, I've followed tracks and I got on tracks in the snow and I'm, I'm out there by myself and what am I going to do? I'm going to track this thing. I found yeah. fresh tracks and, and I jumped one one time and all I saw was rack going out there in the woods and I'm like, well, that sucks. <laughs> but <laughs> then I sat there and was like, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I mean, I was almost in his bed on top of him before he, he learned jumped. something from it. Absolutely, and I'm like, this this is cool, and that's that's I said, like that's that's kind of our backstory. Like we we were just in you know, immersed in it. Like my grandfather, my uncles, they all hunted. Um, my grandfather on my mother's side, he hunted. In fact, we that up where my mom lived, the last couple times he hunted, he couldn't get around. We actually had a chair. We had a lawn chair right off the yard, basically, because my mom's yard, it, where we mowed and kept it groomed, went right to some thicket, to the woods, a creek. Like, we said, how far can you walk, Pap? He said, I want to sit by that creek. So we took him, walked him down there, sat a chair down there. He sat there. He had no intentions of shooting anything. Yeah. He just wanted to be out. He was just in his... Yeah. And, yeah, he was, sure he and, and we were being out, out there. We were out. In fact... I shot a deer one year. He was sitting in that chair, and I was way up on the hill in a stand that me and my uncle built, which was pretty cool. My uncle shot a nice buck out of that stand. I shot a big doe out of that stand. And as soon as I shot, my grandfather said, I knew, I, I just, I knew it was you. You know, he said, he had no idea how many guys were on that hill, but he knew, he goes, I knew it was you. He just knew it. Yeah. And he was there to experience us bringing that deer out. And that was just you know, little stuff like that that I probably didn't think of that memory in ten years until we're sitting here today, and it just it, it, it pops in. in. Yeah, yeah, I, I stuff have like that. Yeah. I have one. Uh, you know, it's very similar. You know, a, a buddy of mine. I was hunting with him, and he had his dad with him. He was his dad was older and couldn't get around much anymore. And you know, we're out, and 
and we decided we were going to put on a, a drive for his dad. And he said, well, I'll stay with my dad. And then his dad at the time was, you know, probably late seventies, maybe early eighties at this point. And we go drop down over this hill and we start pushing some deer out in front of us. And I hear two shots and I said, well, hopefully he got some. So we get back up to where they're at and everybody called him pap, you know, his dad, everybody called him pap. And I said to him, I says, well, I said, Pap, did you get one? He's like, yeah, I got one. I said, where's it at? He says, it's over there. He says, shot a doe. He starts walking that direction, and my buddy says, he didn't shoot that deer. I did. He says, he never opened the caps on his scope. <laughs> <laughs> so he had Butler Creek caps on that were solid, <laughs> and he's firing at this deer that he never even lifted the caps. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he says, but I'm not telling him. You know? Right. And oh, it was yeah. it, he was so happy about that deer. You know, yeah. that it was just, That's awesome. it didn't matter. It was, <laughs> right. it was such right. a cool experience. And those are, those are the things you just will remember forever. Yeah. 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 And that's, that, that's what, I mean, in, in the end, if we, if we never make another dollar and the show would end tomorrow, you know, for whatever reason, I, I'm, I'm proud of what we, what we've accomplished. You know what I mean? And it's all been for, like I said, for something that, that was horrible. Like yeah. it's probably, I mean, Losing him next to losing my mother, those were the two worst days of my life. Right. Um, you know, him maybe even a little more. My my mom had cancer, and, you know, by the time she went, it was kind of a godsend. Um, but to lose him the way way we did. and So young. Yeah, and we had a, we had a bad run there because he, he died, and he was real close to my uncle, my dad's brother, Wayne. And six weeks later, my uncle Wayne died. Oh. Um, just... Very unexpected, too. Mm. He, he got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. He climbed back in bed, and my aunt said, everything all right? He said, yeah. He said, I'm fine. She went to wake him up in the morning. He never woke up. <sighs> so it was Man, like, if you're going to go, that's it. Oh, absolutely. That's there. I said. Even the way yeah. my brother went, like, I, I, I talked to the, the doctors and at the at the hospital, and they were like, you know, I, like, I, I, I flew there. Like, I we were in fair chance, and we didn't even start our baseball game yet. It rained, and they were trying to dry the field, and. My stepmother called me, and she was hysterical. And they're up in Potter County; they're three and a half hours away. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, I'm trying to get there. I'm a little closer, so I'm trying to get there. And I almost wrecked twice on on one nineteen coming mm-hmm. home, you know. And and I was actually hoping a cop would pull me over so I could say, "Here's what's going on. Can you either take me and leave my car here, or can you give me an escort?" Right. Um, it would find me later, whatever you want to do, but can you get me there? Mm-hmm. Um, and by the time I got to the hospital, my, a good friend of my dad's was my brother's boss and he followed the ambulance to the hospital. He was with him the whole time there, you know, they, they kept him in a room. My stepfather, he worked in Lake Trobe. I called him and said, Hey, they're bringing him into the hospital. Can you go over and see what's going on? And I said, I don't know if they'll tell you anything, but can you go over? And by the time I got there, you know, I'm trying to, I'm taking phone calls. My sisters are calling, you know, trying to, trying to talk to everybody. And, and, uh, so I get to the hospital and they kind of took me to a a family room, you know, and my stepfather was in there and my, my brother's boss was in there. And as soon as I walked in, I'm like, well, you know, what's going on? And when they both hit the floor, their heads hit the floor and I'm like, okay, like this ain't good. Yeah. And, uh, so they told me, you know, that he had passed and, so then that started a whole snowball of trying to get, I have two sisters that live out of state. Mm-hmm. You know, I called them, gave them the rundown what was going on, and that was not fun. Um, no. Yeah, my, my little sister, she's, her and, my, her and my brother were 11 months apart. So they were basically grew up as twins. Yeah. Right. Um, so, like, that was probably the worst thing. It, it sucked being the one here to have right. to do that. I mean, I don't know if I'd have rather been getting the news or giving the news, but um, it just... It, that was just probably the the worst thing I've ever gone through, and and uh, so I I'd even asked, you know, can I see him? And they were like, well, you know, they got the coroner has to come in and do their stuff and all that, and so they're like, we'll we'll try to get you back because I'm like, I don't care at this point, like it's my brother, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, well, then they never let me go back, and I kind of had had words with the with the yeah. ER doctors you know yeah. i i went to the nurse's station i'm like i want to see the doctor now like 
and they knew I was hot. Right. And they took me back to another waiting room inside the ER and you know, got me away from the general public. <laughs> and uh, so the doctor come out and, and he calmed me down. Like I was, I was pissed off about it, but um, he, he basically told me, he's like, he's like, we did everything we could. He's like, I don't like losing anybody young. He's like, we probably put more drugs into him than we probably should have. He said, I, I just don't want to give up when they're that young. Right. He said, I can't tell you what it was. He said, but I can tell you it was catastrophic enough that nothing. He said, everything they did at Rolling Rock was on par. Everything Mutual Aid Ambulance did was on par. Um, the guy that found him, the first guy that found him in the stairwell, he, he panicked. He didn't know mm -hmm. CPR. and But the next guy was there within seconds, and he got an AED on him. He did CPR. They never stopped. Like, they... And I know I'm 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 in fire, and he, I work with EMS, and he, that was not even in the realm of possibility of sustaining anything after an hour. They worked him for over an hour. Yeah. Wow. Um, and and it's just it's just one of them things like that kind of set me at ease that mm -hmm. everything was done that could be done. And then when the autopsy came out, it was you know the ER doctor said he said I feel like he was dead before he hit the floor. Wow. Right. So, I mean, it's kind of weird because, you know, that and the way my uncle went, I went and got checked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. Every, everybody jumped me about it because I, I don't doctor regular. Mm. And they all jumped me about it. And I went and got checked and they said, I'm, I'm good, but it could be hereditary. So now we worry about his son. Um, you know, so, but that's, you know. That, yeah, a little it, early to, little early to work so. to check that. Yeah. But um, that's, you know, it basically the way the way it went it was it was it was a rough rough go for our family there for a while like yeah, I, it sounds I like lost it. my mom and my grandmother fairly close together then we lost him and my uncle and it was you know it was so i mean it's Just, bitter it's bittersweet what we do i've gotten a lot better i mean i've done a lot of these i've done you know a lot of interviews about it and stuff and and i don't mind talking about it now because i feel that i, th I feel we've honored him right you know, I, yeah i, I think I, that I, he yeah. would be absolutely, have, absolutely yeah. Uh, ecstatic about the program so you've proud. put together oh, but you know he's yeah. definitely looking down on it and you know to to probably take us on a little bit more of a, a positive <laughs> note here he's probably extremely happy about something we haven't talked about yet and that's the fact that you got a beer out. I, that's, I, mean, I was yeah, yeah. I, was, I was gonna allude to that here now that kind of was a good segue into that yeah we're uh we're gonna be introducing our own our own beer it's it's chico outdoors american lager um, it is brewed by, uh, Forbes trail brewing, Mike Fay. Um, it's, it's good beer. Um, Mike's got a lot. Oh, of, I'll have some. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Say, we'll be cracking yeah, one open. Sure will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's, Chico, sure. Mike's, Mike's got a lot of good beer up there. Um, if you go to our, our Facebook page, we, they just, I think Steve just put it up today. The, the label. Yeah. Um, it's, that's yeah. what made me, I saw that today and I was like, oh, we have to ask. Yeah. That later. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, um, that was yeah. Mark Franks was big with that too. Mark's Mark's good friends with with Mike up there and and years ago Mark was working to to develop his own beer for Anchored Angler and that's kind of the beer he was going with back then. Um, he wanted something that was light you could drink out on the boat all day and you know. Mm -hmm. Get a good buzz on, but not yeah. not not be trashed. You know, get something, something <laughs> not good. Fall over not being able to right. pull it back onto the tree. <laughs> but but something something with flavor too. Not you know. So he brought us some stuff down the sample, and that that one was pretty good. I mean, he's got he's going to be at the show. Mike's going to have some stuff there too from his brewery. Um, he's got like a sours and an IPA. He's going to bring because we do we do Miller Light and Yingling. Um, we do Helltown, and this year we're going to have Arsenal Cider. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have Country Hammer Moonshine does their thing. They do the slushies. They're, I highly recommend their coffees to start oh. off your Saturday oh, yeah. morning. Ooh, right. yeah, that, we that had quite a few of their iced coffees last uh, year. Her mom brought one back to the booth last year, and and Megan tried it. She's like, you got to try this. I took a sip, <laughs> and I looked at her, and she was like, well, you got to go get it because I'm working the booth. I'm working the cash register. <laughs> <laughs> so start so, with your moonshine coffee. Yeah. I got an idea. We'll go over, and then I'll call Austin, and I'll say, hey, I need you to come over here and fish with me. <laughs> and I'll bring your wall. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, there you go. That, yeah, yeah. No, nah, but that's – yeah, that that – I think probably on everything we everything we put his name on to this point. That's what I, I said that I think that would probably be the, the the accomplishment of his life to have his name on on a beer and and that's a I when I told Brian and Ryan back to Toyota 
they want them for they want cans for on the shelf up there, right? Uh, yeah, know, Brian oh, wants yeah. them for his office, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Them. So yeah, there's going to be a limited number of cans. They did run some cans, uh, but a lot of it's going to be going to be draft now. And and but yeah, I mean those guys up there, Mike, Mike, and and Caitlin, his wife, and they they're good people. Um, that's we're, awesome. we're, we're probably yeah, going to we're probably going to head up there in uh, I think Father's Day weekend. They're having a little little thing up there at, at the brewery, and we're going to set up up there. They're, they're offering us a spot mm-hmm. to set up to promote That's cool. outdoors That's up awesome. there. And uh, so we're going to probably head up there and do that. And, yeah, try their stuff, too. Definitely we, will. We, we sampled a lot of yeah. their stuff at our at our one meeting, and not a lot got accomplished once we decided <laughs> to get into sampling. But uh, they got one taste like Skittles. It is, oh, it's amazing. It oh. tastes like a handful of Skittles. Oh, no, I'll have to try and that. I'm not, I'm not wild on fruity beers. I was going to say, that's up my alley. That's he kind of your alley. Yeah. yeah. The, more of the fruit don't, sours. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't <laughs> we'll deny it. Try You got to try it. to try it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good stuff. But, um, yeah, so we got that. Yeah. That, that, that's that, cool. That was, that's... that was pretty cool. I'm, I'm excited about that. That's, that's actually generated a lot of interest because when we started putting teasers out there about it and then, you know, putting that, putting the label out now and, and uh, that's, that's that's it. It's different. It's unique. Like it's, yeah, yeah that's definitely something, something definitely unique. That's, so. One thing I still wanted to touch on, you know, because I've seen them walking around up there. You know, the kids love the the squirrel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we had to bring the squirrel. I mean, and because yeah. you'd mentioned earlier, now it makes sense that your mom had called your brother Rue, and I know that that is the name of. Uh, yeah, the squirrel that yeah. walks. Them. Yeah, I think that's... your dog too, maybe. Yeah, oh, okay. Right. We got a dog. Dog's yeah. Rue. We have okay. <laughs> we have Cruz, but we call him Rue. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so so mom started that, and I, my mother had a name for me when I was little. Sometimes they weren't good, but uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. she did have yeah. some for me that I was like I hate it, but you know. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, that one. Like I said, that was back when you know when it when when he was first born. That was you know Winnie the Pooh was the big thing mm-hmm. and. And they had the little kangaroo, you know, Kanga and Roo, the mother and the and Roo. So, mm. um, so that's that's where that came from. And when huh. we were coming up with names for the for the squirrel, we that was something that I kind of I danced around it for a year or two. I was like, yeah, we need a mascot, you know. And I looked at costumes and stuff. And I was looking at different costumes and and I I found that and and I they had a really cool uh, buck. It was a big like it. I don't know. The thing was expensive. It was really expensive, but it, it had like a, a thing that you put on the chest that looked like muscles. Like it was more of a, it was more for like a, like a, sport, a sports yeah, team or whatever, yeah. but, but it was all muscular. It had this big rack. I mean, this <laughs> thing was so cool. And I'm like, I don't know, that's just going to be too much. <laughs> and, and then we started looking and and my buddy, Mike Malloy from Helltown uh, graphics, he, or Helltown concepts, he, um he had made our banner, and I never gave him a direction to go with the banner um, for the kids area. I just said, you know, make it make it kidsy, you know, cool look. And well, he put a squirrel on there, and so it 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 was perfect because when I started looking at the banner, the the, the squirrel on the banner and the squirrel costumes, because I'm like, no, maybe we'll go with a squirrel. You know, I started looking at animal different ones, and I'm like, the squirrels are kind of cool. Like that could kind of be be cool it's outdoors, yeah. And mm-hmm. then I'm like, then I looked at the banner, and I'm like. Well, shit, I have to go because the, the one we yeah. got looks very similar right. to what's on the banner. And with that, I, I want to do more with that. I, I haven't been able to get a lot of people that want to wear it. Um, <laughs> it is, especially when the weather's warm. It's, it's oh, warm. Sure it's warm. Anybody yeah. listening or watching out there, we need a squirrel. Yeah, we yeah. need a squirrel. Need a squirrel. Uh, my son, he's worn it a couple of times. He's he's not real hot about it. I can't it. imagine. Um, <laughs> it made its debut at Bridgeport Sportsman's at their kids' fishing derby and that was a fiasco. It was really muddy that day, and it was just it was a mess. But it went over really well. I had him take it, take candy around, and, and we we had a, a bait bucket, we had a, a minnow bucket full of candy, and I had him carry that fishing rod. And we have a vest for it now, a fishing vest. And, mm. and uh, funny little story behind the fishing vest. That was my brother's vest. Oh, oh somebody really? gave, somebody gave it to him uh, when he worked up at Rolling Rock. They a lot of guys come fly fishing up there. It, it's a it was a brand new war of his vest somebody gave him and i think he was afraid to wear it because it was so expensive yeah. it was a really nice vest and it fit that costume perfect that's huh. i just I, ha- I had it hanging in 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 my closet and i i kept thinking i want to do something with this like i didn't mm-hmm. know how how i wanted to dress it up because it was just too plain as a squirrel you know and i started looking around and i, I had a fishing hat that vest you know we, we gave him a rod gave him that bait bucket like 
it it, it made it perfect. Mm -hmm. And that vest was was his. I I, I brought that when we cleaned out his house. Yeah. I found yeah. that vest in his in his closet. It still had the tags on it. Still had the Orvis tags <laughs> on it. Um, yeah, and that's the kind of person. Them guys took care of him up there. You know, a lot of guys come up there and 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 they would take they would give him you know gun socks and those you know hats and different like they they took care of like he was just outgoing he would talk to anybody um you know and and he he just them and a lot of those guys up there he probably knew more than a lot of them guys that came up there because you know they're politicians and they're you know actors and stuff like he's he got to do some cool stuff up there too he he got to pick chip ganassi up at the airport one time and huh. bring him up there chip came up there and and uh stuff like that so but like I think a lot of times guys like that, those guys aren't true outdoorsmen, and you know, and he he would just strike up a conversation with them, and you know, so they they took just care of him. But, but yeah, but it was pretty cool that vest. If you see the vest that he's yeah, wearing, that was, that's, that's awesome. That. The, yeah. the meaning that, that behind that, 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 that was that, yeah. that, that was the way that that all and it, and it was mm -hmm. so crazy how it fit perfect because <laughs> you're thinking that costume is big and bulky, uh -huh. and, mm -hmm. and that thing it just the way it fit it. It, like it, it was, was meant to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it was. It was cool. pretty cool. Maybe that's great. Maybe I could. Yeah, yeah, a few costume. more pounds. I'd, I'd, fit in <laughs> I'd like to start taking it. I mean, my goal here, and I, I keep saying, like, I need about eighty hours a day oh, uh, to do everything I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I would really like to start taking it to parades and different stuff and promoting. Oh, and yeah, even even idea. other even other shows, you know, like offering that up to other shows to, mm. to bring it in yeah. and, and do stuff like that. So I mean, we got it. Might as well use it yeah, now. Right. We'll definitely use it at the show. But and I've taken it to the fish and derbies and stuff, you know, it's been out a few times, but um yeah, it just it fits. Yeah. It, it, fits. it does it's great. Yeah. yeah. You guys have really uh -huh. built a, a really well rounded event and proud to be part of it for sure and see how it's grown and i think it's definitely something that's going to continue yeah. to grow for you yeah. and it absolutely is yeah. continue where we're hoping for some some great weather this year we're on on pace for that i think the, the way it. it's looking we, 22 we've been was cold and yeah. then last year was nice and yeah you you kind of kind of <laughs> seems yeah, to go back and forth yeah. on it but i think we're <laughs> due but, i think but you still draw the crowd yeah and, yeah and i i think we just haven't been able to find that that exact weather mix that, that we need well but, we live in pennsylvania you're but, never gonna find no, that exact weather mix. no you could no that's why i said that, that two years ago we had every season in one day thrown at <laughs> us you know or one weekend but I remember that but uh, i just i think that um you know i i think that the, the reason we do it and and all that like you said i think people are going to come it's it's just it's going to keep growing people as more people find out about us we get it out more and people want to know why we do it um, I think that's what's really going to set us apart. I yeah. mean, it, and it's it's crazy that the oh. uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, that <laughs> happen. Just keep talking. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's crazy crazy to think that that um, you know, how many people even right in our immediate area don't know us, um, or don't know we're there. We're finding that out a lot. So, I mean, to build on, you know, build outside of our area, we still got to capture some of some of what's in our area too. I think that you know that we're missing. Yeah. Right. So. But. Yeah, it's it's definitely a good thing that you've put together and, and uh you know, like I said, I'm 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 looking to see this continue to grow and it's 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 an awesome thing for sure. So Yeah, well I appreciate I appreciate you guys. Um, you know what I mean? That this goes way back to standing down here in the shop talking before the first one or your the second one, you know. We we talked I think we talked a little bit before the first one and you weren't able to make it. And then the second one I think I probably spent Two or three nights down here, just just bullshitting about yeah. it and, and getting ideas, and I probably blew your phone up more than I probably should have. Ah, that's and uh, but but no, and it's like bit. I said, and it's it's just just here alone. This shop, like like we said earlier, has brought me you know Matt and Rob and and Todd and and Dave Beer. You know, yeah, glad of... to have Dave back again this year. He's coming yeah. back this year. Um, so it's just and, and everybody brings somebody. It seems like into the fold and. So that's yeah. that's our goal, just to keep growing and yeah. yeah so a lot of stuff for people to do, you know, a lot of stuff for the kids, there the fish and ponders, you know, the yeah. vendors, everything we've talked about, the food vendors, you know, the shows, the concert, everything, the the beer, the you know, everything that's going on. I mean, it's an awesome thing. This is going to be what April thirteenth and fourteenth. So April thirteenth and fourteenth of twenty twenty four. Uh, that's coming up, and like you said, when we air this yeah. podcast, yeah, it's well, going to be I right before then. Within a few days here, I think we'll be able we'll to have this we'll ready this to go. He's pretty so. quick at editing. So. Yeah, if he, 
Well, he hasn't paid the light bill yet. Well, he's, so we'll he's, he's got a lot of editing to do on this yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> if, you're, if you're just listening to this, we're going to test our, um, our studio lights were being a little funky here, so oh. I had to kind of leave a couple of times to make some adjustments <laughs> if you're just listening. So. That's all right. You, you made it work. You made it Again, work. Unscripted. unscripted. But, uh, so oh, yeah. tell uh, everybody, Matt, Again, where they can, you know, reach out to you as far as uh, seeing, you know, what you got going on and your, yeah. your websites yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, the big thing right now is our website. Um, we got that up and running this year. It's it's www.chicooutdoors.org. Um, we own both domains, so if you hit .com, you're still going to find us. Um, that was something Mike suggested. He said buy them both. It's right. it's not that expensive, mm-hmm. so we bought them both. Um, we're on we're on Facebook and we're on Instagram, so. I mean, follow us there. You're going to see it. See us on Fox 53. Our commercials on there. Um, just reach out. I mean, there's right through our page. We we've been getting since we started the website. We got a ton of questions filled through just through the through the website. That's been huge. Um, so anything that's on your mind, if we didn't, you don't think we covered it, or you know, you got want more mm-hmm. more information, I reach out. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's uh, um, you know anybody that's out there listening or watching. You know, if you you think you you know want to you know either get involved either through volunteering or if you're looking to uh you know help matt out here as far as uh, any type of sponsorships with the the program that he has or or if you even have uh, a youth program that you would like these guys to help you with uh or veterans uh this is something that is passionate you know for them you know for their their whole organization this is they they you know again they're these are these are unpaid you know people that are putting their time in to put together an awesome event for families for kids for everyone to enjoy and uh, they can definitely use everyone's support so if there's anybody out there that that feels that uh, they might be able to be of some assistance definitely reach out to matt through the website or mm-hmm. you yeah. know social media and yeah. i'm sure it'd be appreciated absolutely yeah. and and, and yeah. pull one of us aside at the show i mean Anybody that has a staff shirt on up there, they'll, they'll have bright green staff shirts on. <laughs> Can't you know, miss them. If it's cold, we'll have these. You know, a lot of us will have these shirts on. You know, pull us aside and just just ask questions about it. You know, ask us. You know, we we'll, we'll can always use help. Um, or if, like you said, if you have an organization that needs some help, you know, that's that's what we're about. I mean, awesome. everything we can do to to get get kids involved. That's the big thing. And then military veterans for sure. Well, Saturday, uh, April 13th and Sunday, April 14th, uh, we hope to see everyone there. And we're hoping this is going to be a big event. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to continue to grow. I can promise you from being there that you will have a good time if you show up and that it's definitely something that, you know, everyone can find something to do there. And we definitely want to see, you know, moms, the dads, the kids all show up Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, have a good time. So, yeah, for sure. uh, Matt. Thank you very, very much for, you know, being part of this. this you know, when I talked to you about it, I, I wanted to see, you know, how, how willing you were to talk about your brother. I mean, I know that you guys talk about the event, and there's a lot that goes on with the event. But I, I felt, you know, and Megan and Ken felt that it was very important that we talked about mm-hmm. your brother, Chico, and just what this event was about, how it started you know why and and what your brother meant to you that's that's just something we really wanted to get out there and and, and hit on so, right. so thank you yeah. for that information no absolutely yeah. and thanks thank for very much. thanks for yeah thanks for having me because that's something that yeah probably in quite a few years we haven't really really hammered home who he was and and i i hope we painted a pretty good picture of, of who he was yep. absolutely yeah. i think we did so yeah. Yeah, Megan, one, Ken, yeah. any last words? Yeah, I know one Ken, last thing where we kind of end every uh, episode. His question. We ask our guests either dream hunt or a dream fishing trip. <laughs> dream hunt. Yeah. Dream hunt. Yeah, for, where Where would you go? Yeah, what for, would you chase? Yeah, hunt. Um, no, I would have to probably say Montana elk. There you go. Oh, yeah. I think it'd be Montana elk. <laughs> two in a row for elk. Yeah. Elk out west. Yeah. Two in a row. Yeah, That's I mean, great. I mean, I'd love to love to draw a tag here, but. It just wouldn't be. It's not the same. I mean, there's some yeah. really good, bull, really good bull elk here. Oh, yeah. we, we there got, are. We got. They're really up at our camp now too. We got a good herd up there, and mm-hmm. it'd be fun to shoot one here. But I think yeah. I think one's tough to be draw. Yeah. 
you talk to guys that have been putting in for 25 years and they're like, I haven't drawn. And then you, that one guy that came in last year, he was like, Oh yeah, I put in that still, it's like my second year. And I drew for archery. Full was, elk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. At and the same time, a, we're all in on he it. Got a hammer and he got too. one. Yeah, yeah. Good for him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, it was yep. an awesome yeah, thing. There's, there's, I mean, yeah, that's, that's something to throw real quick out there. Yeah. You get a chance to, to go up north yeah. and see the elk we have here. I mean, they are impressive. Yeah. I mean, we're, I think they're doing a good job of Love maintaining it. that herd too. It's, it's a, Good, good elk. The Keystone chapter elk, I can't think of the name. Yeah, Kika, yeah. Yeah, they come down yeah, yeah. to your show also, and then they also do a, uh, they uh, put out their raffle that they do for a tag a year, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, 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 you can you can buy their tickets. Um, they get a special tag, and then there's, I believe there's a governor's tag, too, that, that they raffle as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Right. Somebody raffles, nice. but Correct. Um, yeah, I, we, we got to know the guys from Kika pretty well. In fact, the the president right now uh, used to be a game warden with me, mm. um, so he's he's kind of moved careers. He, he he's he's in that role now, and he's he's doing a good job up there. So yeah, yeah that's nice. that's that's a gem up there in in, in Benazet. If you ever get a chance oh. to go up and see the elk, herd, that's that is something that we shouldn't take don't, shouldn't take for granted because being that close to him, yeah, yeah. Being, being that Absolutely. close. I know a lot of guys that have never seen one. I talked to a guy last year at an event I went to for. Um, operation vet now at z&m that event they had and one of the guys he was like he was like man that'd be so awesome he's from down south he's like that'd be so awesome to to see him i was like you can come to my camp anytime i'm there in the yard all the time <laughs> you know so come up and see him awesome. yes, uh, that'd be cool well right. hey thank you again yeah. um you know we appreciate you being here we appreciate everyone listening tuning in watching uh, sorry for the lighting issue for those yeah. of you who are yeah. watching. We'll, we'll make sure much. that it'll give me some good at some a uh, little more practice. Yeah, you know, you're gonna practice a little bit to oh, yeah. fix that, but we'll get, it we'll, out. we'll get that figured out. Oh, yeah. and, you know, it's just part we'll of the out. learning curve as we go That's along. It. But, uh, just talk too long. No, 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 you're good. No, no it's in no. charge though. That's yeah. our fault. Yeah. Yeah. They look like they had full battery, but yeah, well, hey. It's like a trail camera battery. It's a hundred percent one day, and then it's sixty percent the next day, and then it's dead the next day. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, that so, happens. So, yeah. but hey, thank you, everyone. Yep. Matt, thank you. Thank we you hope guys. to see everybody Saturday and Sunday, thirteenth mm-hmm. and fourteenth. Mm-hmm. Lee, show up to the Westmoreland Fairgrounds. Absolutely. Bring your kids. Bring your significant others significant others Wives. whoever you want Wives. Yeah. anybody anybody yeah. or don't bring your anybody. neighbors just show up. or if you're just by yourself just show <laughs> yeah. up because i can up. promise you you will have an awesome time you will so yeah. thanks again yeah. and we will catch you for episode three here very yeah. soon absolutely All thank right. you everybody thank you everyone appreciate Take care. it yep. bye, bye.